by alt tabbing. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Ah. Oh my god, how is this on? Like 50%. How loud is this game? Oh my god. Get off of my screen. We'll do seldom for both instead of never. Oh my god, like if this is loud, then what the heck is max volume? I don't even know. Because that was so loud. Where's my water? Oh, there you are. That was so dangerous. I picked up my water bottle by the spout. Good morning, Petro. I think my screenshot might be like, I don't know why my model keeps switching to sad. <laughs> I don't know what, like, button I'm pressing. It's very weird. I'm, like, now pressing the other buttons to see. Because I know that, like, one, two, and three do that. But, like... The game still feels very loud and everything is very low. I'm very scared for the game volume in this. Cause it was blasting my eardrums off and it was all right so <laughs> the graphics um let's see what in full screen or do we want it in window nah full screen's fine hardware mouse cursor toggle mouse hardware cursor when enabled mouse performance is improved Reset the zoom level to the default value and prevent any subsequent attempts to zoom in or out. Sprite outlines. If this setting is turned on, creatures and spells will have a slight outline applied to them so that they are easier to see. This is an enhanced edition feature. If this setting is turned on, the world will appear black and white when the game is paused. This is a enhanced edition feature. Okay. Highlight selected sprite. Dither. Always dither characters obscured by- What does dither mean? Otherwise, characters are only dithered when the cursor is over them or their portrait. When not dither dithered, obscured characters are not displayed at all. What is dithering? Hold on, I need to- I've seen this in these old games and I don't know what it means. Also, I need to turn on- Or not turn on, but I have to mark- that today is our first day of Planescape. All right, what is dithering? Garung, garund, or present participle? The fuck does that mean? Oh, be indecisive. He was dithering. Okay. So. They don't know what the fuck to do when they're obscured? Why would you ever have that on? Oh wait, no, 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 hold on. There was a add white noise to a digital recording to reduce distortion or low in video games. Dithering is a technique to increase the amount of color and shading that can be done on a system. The effect is achieved by using lines or dots, which are then blurred by the low quality NTSC signals, composite or RF, that the system uses. Okay. <laughs> Slash R gaming. What is dithering in video games and should I have it on? I don't notice any change in FPS with it on versus off. Should I use it in Subnautica below zero? Dithering is when a pixelated thing gets blurred slash smudged a little bit to make it less of a hard edge. The intended effect is similar. Okay, and then somebody said, or the OP said that's very similar to anti-aliasing. 
The intended effect is similar, but anti-aliasing is when the pixels at the edge of objects are blended with the pixels of the objects they're in front of. So if you have a hard red object sitting in front of a blue object, the pixels on the edge of the red object will be rendered purple to smooth the edges. Dithering is the same scenario in this same scenario would look at a swath of pixels. Oh, <laughs> didn't even again. What is what is making me? cry? I have to pay very close attention now. I'm so curious what is it like clicking maybe somewhere on the screen? I don't I don't know. Anyway, dithering is yeah, it's <laughs> dithering is very sad. Uh, dithering in the same scenario would look at a swath of pixels at those edges and alternate blue at different points to create the illusion of purple pixels. It's an old effect from the NES days when they could only have eight colors on screen at once. So what you would see is something like a row of red pixels. Then the next row would be one blue pixel every five pixels. Then the next row would have three. Then it would be every other pixel, then it would do the opposite to fade into blue. Since old CRT screens didn't display sharp pixels, it would create the illusion of a color that wasn't really there. So a game can save on color space by utilizing dithering. And while I'm not 100% sure on this part, I would guess that dithering uses less processing power than anti-aliasing. Yeah, but what does it do? Like, <laughs> good morning, Anzi. What the f what does dithering do? I don't get it. <laughs> I, I I need somebody to explain this to me like I'm five. I don't I do not get what dithering is. I guess we'll keep it on because I don't know what it is. Linear scaling. If this setting is turned on, characters and spells will have a smoothing effect applied to them at high resolutions. game world scaling. If the setting is turned on, the pressing then pressing the middle mouse button will set the zoom level to a pixel perfect match of the original game. Larger viewing field, unscaled, pixel perfect game world. Okay, sure. If the setting is turned on, the tablet interface will be used. When off, the PC interface will be used. Okay. Only advanced users should change this option. I'm not an advanced user. <laughs> Enable DR D or direct blah blah blah. Oh god, I <sighs> direct X rendering support only use this if you experience graphical problems using the default renderer. We'll double the size of the cursors on screen. I might need that because this is a pretty small cursor. All right, turned off sound gameplay. Where's God mode? <laughs> Where is easy mode? Difficulty one. <laughs> Tooltip display. This slider controls the delay before a tooltip appears over a control. The maximum value disables. Okay. This slider controls how fast the area scrolls in response to the keyboard shortcuts. Difficulty one. <laughs> This control determines the difficulty of the game. Moving the slider to the left will cause enemies to deal less damage, making the game easier. Where is, like, story mode? Does this game have a story mode? If it doesn't, we might not be able to finish this. <laughs> I'm too bad at these video games. Frame rate. Fuck it. All the way up. Wait. Speeding up. Adjusting... Oh, okay, never mind. We, then we want it. It's just normal. Gore, yes. Heal on rest. Uh, enable this option to rest repeatedly, casting healing spells until fully healed. Otherwise, the party will rest only once and cast only the currently memorized healing spells. I don't think it has a story mode, but the combat is very minimal here. I'm holding you to that. I really don't want to give up on your game, <laughs> but I will. Enabling this option reverses the default run and walk behavior. When disabled, characters will walk to the selected point. Holding shift allows them to run instead when enabled. Fuck it, always run. 
I want to always be running. I don't have time. If this setting is turned on, the name of the destination will be displayed when you arrive at the area. Sure. Uh, show enemy health statuses on enable cloud save. Yes. Uh, character hit. Depending on my build, I usually go mage pacifist, and so I talk no jutsu my way out of combat. I mean, I do like that, so. Uh, <laughs> that is great for. Please pause the game. when I find a trap. I need that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I didn't get to see the opening because I had to skip this. Oh god, we're on 30 FPS. The original one, it looks like it. Ooh, it's, that almost looks like the mouse that Juniper killed yesterday. I don't believe you. <laughs> What did I just witness? The cinematics are not remastered by the Enhanced Edition? Well, okay, lazy, but... All right. I need... <laughs> I'm scared. I need... Also, oh my god, it's still so loud. How's it still so loud? Maybe it's just me. It feels very loud to me. <laughs> All right. Oh no. Okay. This is character generation screen. Modify your statistics by clicking the plus and minus buttons. It sure is kind of loud. Do I need to turn it down more? Done. Did it. Volume mixer. All right. Planescape. Let's put you down to like 75%. How about that? Is that better? Now it seems quiet. Also, oh my god, I'm ugly. No, I don't want to be ugly. Why have you done this to me? How about that? Well, not, I understand it's now not. Oh, that's very quiet now. Maybe 85%? Hold on. Ugh, we're back to the I can't alt tab out of anything without the whole universe knowing. But we have that in Hades too, so it's fine. Okay, how about that? 
That feels better. What do you guys think? Sounds good. All right. So the only thing that I know about this is because our, the only thing I know about this is a friend told me that wisdom is charisma in this game. Is that true? Not that I don't believe him, but more I'm just so used to old D&D where charisma is charisma that that doesn't make sense. Yes, but smiley face. Okay. All right. A high strength allows me to carry more and makes my melee attacks more accurate and damaging. A high wisdom helps me recall memories and gives me bonus to experience points. A high constitution gives me more hit points and in the nameless one's case, a faster regeneration as well. The higher your charisma, the more favorable to others will react towards you. A high dex makes you harder to hit and aids my thief skills. Okay. Uh, a high intelligence helps me regain memories faster, gives you more dialogue options, and aids my mage skills. Okay, so I want to be a rogue, so... Or like a rogue E character, I guess. So I want how many points do I have? Okay, I've is it okay. Okay. I don't think I can go with nine con and nine strength. I think I will actually die, so <laughs> Do they need to be even numbers like it is in D&D &D? or does like it scale? Don't need in, don't want intel. No, I'm kidding. I love intelligence. Oh, can I make it go? No, I can't make it go down. I need my hand held through character creation, so don't fuck it up. <laughs> I don't have story mode to protect me anymore. So Pedro, I need your guiding light. 15 should be the max you go in stats and character creation. Okay. So is it okay? So I'm assuming that because of that, it's not like it's it, it's incremental, whereas like every point you put in does something versus in D&D, &D, only every even number does something for you. Right. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Altab, we can thank Pedro for the channel points redeem. Hmm. I don't know if I actually need that much con. I kind of want to, like, 15, 15, 15, and then 12. Like, what's the difference between four hit points anyway, you know? <laughs> Every point increases, yeah, instead of every two. Okay. I figured, but I've played just so much D&D &D that I'm like, nope, it all has to be even, even though I know that most RPGs, like, don't, like, hold to that philosophy. All right, fuck it. This is what we're doing. I'm making an executive decision. Ooh, their insides are on the outside. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? I thought you were a debtor for sure. I will be absolutely honest with you, I didn't expect voice acting. That startled me. <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. What? 
Who are you? Oh god. Uh, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? I asked you first, Skull. Yeah, and I... <laughs> I asked you first. I asked you second. <laughs> What's your name? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh god, I just remembered. I can't be hitting the first... I can't be hitting the one and two buttons because it'll change what my character... Only the first line was voice acted. Yeah, yeah, we're back. We're back to Baldur's Gate 1, baby. We're only every six paragraphs were voice acted for no explicable reason. You can't remember your name? <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. Name's Mort. I'm trapped here, too. Do you understand that you're a skull? Also, what is this? Trapped? Yeah. Since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I've tried all the doors, and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. We're locked in... where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Well, that's a fucking visual. The Mortuary. What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You got scars of plenty, though. Looks like some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Man, there's a lot of, like, slang here that isn't getting lost on- He kinda- I don't know why I think of Brooklyn. <laughs> scars. How bad are they? Tell me honestly, Skull. My ugly? Well, the carvings on your chest ain't aren't why am I, did I say ain't aren't too bad. But the ones on your back, more pauses. Say, looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back. What do they say? Heh, <laughs> looks like you come with directions. <clears throat> Let's see. It starts with I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of Styx wash. Okay, so we're in... Well, I mean, I guess we don't... That's like... Hmm. Styx is like... I'm assuming the river Styx, like Greek mythology. Is this the prequel to Hades? But you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal... That'll shed some... I mean, I feel like I should shout those words because they're in capital letters, but I'm not going to. That'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Farod can fill you in on the rest of the chant, if he's not in the dead book already. Farod, does it say anything else? <laughs> yeah, there's a bit more. Let's see. It goes on. Don't lose the journal, or we'll be up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. Or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to this crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farad. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me... Was there one with me while I was lying here? No, you were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Sides, looks like you got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some Burks got to know where to find Farad. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless, and won't attack you unless you attack first. Is there... Uh, okay, hold on. Is there some other way? I don't want to kill them just for a key. What? You think it's gonna hurt their feelings? They're dead. And if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers raise them up to work again. Well, alright. 
I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel in one of the shelves around here. Note, searching the shelves in the room for a weapon to attempt... Search the... Sh I don't know why I was about to start that as a question. Search the shelves in the room for a weapon to attack the zombies with. When you find one, go to the inventory screen, the backpack button, backpack button on the lower right, and arm yourself. If you wish to examine any items you find, right-click on them in the inventory screen. All right, I'll look for one. One last thing. These corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battery ram. If you start getting on, if you start getting an edge on you, remember you can run, but they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. To run, either toggle run on in the options screen or hold down the shift key and left click on the area you want to run to. If you are in danger of dying, use running to keep your distance from the zombies while you recover. All right, thanks for the advice, God and Skull. How to play. Display the, oh my God, we have, a, oh, look at our friend. Oh, they move. Look at that, okay. We have our combat log, which is here. Display the additional combat details panel, quick loot. Quickly gather any dropped items near the selected character. Mm-hmm. Formations. Select how the party is arranged while exploring. Abort current action, stop current action of selected character. Select all characters. Select every character in the party. Ooh. Pause and pause. Toggle whether the game is paused. Actions can still be assigned while paused. Which is here. Okay. Select weapon is here. Select spell is here. The very sick Memento vibes I'm getting from this game, though. Never played Memento. No idea what you're talking about. Uh, open options. Priest scroll. It's a movie I haven't seen. Yep. That makes sense. I thought it was a video game. Uh, characters. And I also love how you probably typed that before I even responded to that. So you know me very well, as is to be expected. Ah, these are falling. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to remember what any of these things do. I just need to know we're like, okay. Oh, God, there's so many buttons. Okay. Got it. What's up? Cool. All right. All right. So I was supposed to go to the shelves. Done. Bandages. Uh, oh God. These barrels contain a murky liquid. It smells like a cross between vinegar and formaldehyde. This slab is covered with dried blood and other remains. Okay, well, I assumed that was the shelf. Looks like someone is in the middle of dissecting this corpse. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. A machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead to give direct access to the skull. Okay. Tab highlights lootable. <gasps> oh, okay. Thank you. I needed that. I just, I want that on all the time. <laughs> the system of rails is running through the whole room. It looks like the slabs in the room can be moved around on these rails. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. I got a scalpel. Oh, no, no, no. I've already forgotten everything I've been taught. All right, you found the scalpel. Now get those corpses, and don't worry. I'll stay back and provide tactical, valuable, valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Mort. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. I meant help in attacking the corpse. Me? I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. Alright then. 
Time to introduce these corpses to the second death, then. Although you can attack by selecting a weapon from the quick menu, pressing the A key also toggles the attack cursor. Let's go. Pause. Okay, hold on. Select weapon. Wait, but I have a... No. I... Who am I... Huh? I have a scalpel. Inventory screen? Okay. Got it. I understand. Well, look at how cool I have, like, bone armor. Okay. Select weapon. Bam. All right. Okay. Why can I not? Okay. I'm gone. Well, if they're not going to attack me, then I'm not going to bother. Uh, there is a chest on there, but... Okay. Oh, do I have to, like... Oh, God. Eh! Yeah, I know. Oh, they're just not going to attack me? Okay. Can I talk to them? The zombie stops and stares blankly at you as you approach. The number 782 is carved into their forehead, and his lips have been stitched closed. The faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from the body. Examine the corpse. See if it's carrying a key. The corpse looks like one looks like the one with the key. It is holding it tightly in his left hand, its thumb and forefinger locked around it in a death grip. It looks like you'll need to hack the corpse's hand off to free the key. Why can't I ask it? Can I just have the key? Why am I sad? Ow. Shit. <laughs> Oh god. Preparation room key. Okay. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. Oh, okay. I read that one already. A blood cloth covers the remains of this corpse. The stench rising from the body is almost unbearable. Dried blood covers the slab surface. Like the other corpses in this room, this one is covered in blood and completely gutted. Okay. Ah! I can't. What? What is happening? This corpse's head lolls back and forth on its shoulders. Judging from the angle of the neck, it looks like this man may have been hanged. The number 825 has been painted on the side of his head. Oh god, I hope. It was nice talking to you. Farewell. I. How do I attack things? Okay, I got it. I figured it out. Die. I need to be very close to them. All right. Uh, do we want to go down? <laughs> okay, so how fast do I regenerate? Because I don't look like I regenerate very fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely don't regenerate very fast. We chillin', we chillin'. The game told me to run to regenerate, so I assumed that that meant that I would regenerate quickly. Oh, what are you doing over here? What are you doing? I want to I want to see your idol animation again. Uh 
I will sit here forever to look at the two pixels that you just tossed into the air. I want to know what you did. Was it like one of your eyes? What else could you have on you? Morty! Do your idle animation. You, d oh, you dick. Fine. Alright. So, okay. The door is locked. I will need a key. Don't I have a key? The head of this bronze key has been twisted around itself several times so that it resembles a screw. If more is to be believed, it unlocks one of the doors to the preparation room. When using keys in Torment, you only need to have them in your inventory to unlock a door. In some cases, the key will vanish after it is used. This is done when the key no longer is needed and frees up your inventory slots or other more important items like other keys. Got it. Oh my god, I have limited inventory again. Okay, so I can't go there. It's not allowed. Okay. I lost my key. My hard fought key. Psst. Some advice, Chief? I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are the caretakers? They called themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis of the face. They're an addled bunch of ghouls, ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die, sooner or better than later. I'm confused. Why do these Dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everybody's gotta die. Sooner or better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? The corpses I've seen here, where do they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Before you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? What? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead chits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous, not hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. Last chance, what are you talking about? Chief, they're dead, we're dead, see where I'm going? Eh? Eh? You're a skull. Chief, we already got an open in line for these limpin' ladies. We've all died at least once. We'll have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, alright, you might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine, sinewy cadavers I see here course the caretakers would have to put them with put blah, blah, blah. of course the caretakers would have to part with them first and that's not likely ew please stop talking to me look chief it's obvious they're still a little addled after your kiss with death so i got two bits of advice for you one if you got questions ask me all right to speak with a party member, select the talk option from the quick menu, then left click on the party member you wish to talk to. Alright, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. If I had a journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start with a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Hmm, all right. It couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one, then. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you keep, if you ever start to get cloudy on important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. 
I don't know what accent I'm giving him. <laughs> To access your journal, select the journal button on the quick menu. Your journal will automatically be updated throughout the game. All right, I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so I guess don't kill the zombies because Mort wants to talk to him. The shambling corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. Her skin is paper thin, almost wispy. It's like someone draped a sheet of cobwebs across her frame. The number 594 has been sketched onto her forehead with a charcoal pencil. It was nice talking to you. Farewell. Oh, sorry. I'm sad again. Psst. You see the way she was looking at me? Huh? You see that? The way she was following the curve of my optical bone? What are you talking about? What? Are you blind? She was scouting me out. It was shameless the way she wanted me. Wanted you to go away, maybe. She was obviously too distracted by me. I think you're imagining things. She's a zombie, a corpse, a dead person. You probably didn't even register to her senses. Do I have more options? <laughs> I think you and your imagination need some time away from each other. Yeah, yeah, whatever. When you've been dead for as long as I have, you know the signals. They may be too subtle for you to pick up on, but that's why I'll be spending my nights with some... What was that accent change? With some luscious, recently dead chit while you're standing around going, Huh? What's going on? Where's my mama memories? Whatever, Mort. Let's go. Why are you such a dick? The left side of this woman's face looks as if it's been caved in with a club, and her flesh sags in bruised, swollen clumps over her ruined skull. The number 626 has been stitched onto the corpse's right cheek just below the eye. It was great talking to you. Farewell. This corpse is lumbering along a triangular path. Once it reached one of the corners of the triangle, it pauses, then turns and staggers towards the next corner. It has 965 tattooed on the side of its skull. As you approach, it halts and stares at you. So, why are you walking in a triangle? The corpse stares at you blankly. Leave the corpse in peace. Alright. I... Ooh. The blood stains rust... The blood stains, rust, and other remains cover the surface of this metal slab. It is much larger than most of the other slabs and is sitting on a platform that allows it to be rotated. Okay. Rotation, rotation. Mort, are you coming with me, or are you just gonna hang out over there like a lump? Receiving room logbook. This huge logbook lists mortuary procedures in a tight, crabbed script. All shells entering the mortuary are to be delivered to the receiving room and logged with the scribe on duty before being embalmed and cremated. The records are to be checked to determine if the shell is one of the contracted, and if so, do not prepare the shell. Move the shell to one of the preparation rooms. Contact the scribe on duty and notify him that a, con that a contracted shell is to be raised. Be certain that a shell is thoroughly stripped of its possessions before being sent to the preparation rooms. The contracted workers are contended for simple manual labor and do not have the capacity to search and strip a shell. The faction is not responsible for any possessions lost or items stolen by collectors who have brought the shells to the mortuary. The shell's possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an initiate can be sent to claim them. Please catalog all possessions in the logbook. Following this list, in following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out. Nodders. We have fist irons and copper commons. What are fist irons? Okay. Fists. Many weapons in 
torment do similar amounts of damage, but the type of damage each weapon does varies. Some creatures are more vulnerable to certain types of damage than others. If your current weapon isn't doing much damage against a creature, chances are it is resistant to it. Okay. Uh... I don't think I talked to any of these yet. The corpse is shuffling from slab to slab, bandaging the corpse's lying there. The number 396 is carved into his left temple and his lips are stitched closed. You notice the corpse is carrying a roll of bandages in his hand. The bandages look usable. Mind if I borrow those bandages? The corpse continues to stare at you. Try and take the bandages from the zombie. You sneak your hand out and take the roll of bandages from the corpse's hand. The corpse doesn't even seem to notice. It continues going through the motions of bandaging the bodies. Examine the corpse again. <laughs> okay, bye. I got bandages. The number 1201 has been inked on the forehead of this corpse, and the ink has run down its eyes, cheeks, and jaw. As you follow the ink tears down the corpse's face, you notice it has run into the stitching, sealing the corpse's lips, and is caught on what looks like the corner of a note stuck in the corpse's mouth. Try and pull the note out. The note has mingled with the ichor in the zombie's mouth. If you tried to pull the paper out through the cross stitches, it would tear the paper to shreds. Hacking up the corpse to get at it looks like it will destroy the note. You'll need to find a delicate way to remove the stitches before removing the note. Use the scalpel to cut through the stitches. You deftly slice through the stitches sealing the corpse's mouth and the jaw sags open. You carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth despite the condition of the note. The writing on it still appears legible. To read notes, books, or scrolls, place them in your inventory, then right-click on them to bring up their information panel. Examine the corpse again. Its jaw is hanging open and a trail of ichor is trickling from the corner of its mouth. It was great talking to you, bye. Note from corpse number 1201. This foul-smelling note retrieved from the mouth of one of the mortuary zombies... It looks like it was sewn into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its condition, the writing is legible. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg of you. I know of my legal obligation under the terms of the dead contract, but I am prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you will cremate my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for this note to be left with my body upon my death. If you are reading, if you are reading this, then please use this note as instructed and accept the result in exchange for my contract to duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. It looks like the corpse was too late to prevent the raising, but you notice that beneath the writing is a diagram. It looks like directions from for folding the parchment into a strange pattern. If you are ever capable of examining an object further or performing an action on the object outside of the world screen, a use button will appear for the object on this examined screen. This button allows you to manipulate the item through the dialogue screen. If you wish to examine the diagram on this note further, select the use button below. The foul-smelling note has a strange-looking diagram inscribed beneath the writing. It looks as if it's instructing you to fold the corners of the note so their points touch the center. There is a series of strange marks on each corner. One mark on the upper right, two marks on the lower right, three marks on the lower left, and no marks on the upper left. Oh, God. Okay, so... I'm assuming we go... Upper right... There's no way it's that simple, right? Do we start with zero? So do we go upper left first? Fold upper left. You fold. Okay, and then it was upper right, lower right, lower left. Upper right, lower right, lower left. Damn. Okay, is it really just one, two, three? Upper right. 
lower right. Lower left. All right, so it's not what? <laughs> not this, not a puzzle that I immediately don't understand. Okay, so it's not. There are like 16 combinations it could be, right? So, but it, like, okay. Oh, wait. Wait, but no, that doesn't make sense. It can't be 1201 because you can't do. All right, so let's try upper right, lower right. And then, what was zero? Upper left. Ah, oh, I figured it out, because that's one again, right? Upper right? Yeah, <laughs> I did it. I'm a genius. Because it was like, let my contract number be the key or something like that. I should have known that from the start, but smooth brain, smooth brain. <laughs> As you fold the upper right corner back to the center, the lower left corner mirrors the action until all the corners touch the center. You watch for a moment and the corners of the paper rise up, turning the note into a small four sided paper pyramid. Open the sides of the pyramid. -na -na -na. You peel back the sides of the pyramid and the paper disintegrates to dust. Inside is a small triangle shaped earring. It catches the light and gleams brightly. Take the triangle earring. I got a earring. Can I put it on? Ooh, you received this small blah, blah, blah. Ooh, it's magical. Cool. Can I put it on without knowing what it does? Blah. Big brain. I got the biggest brain. Give me four cursed. <laughs> There's no way that it would curse it, right? What are the chances? And this is why you talk to every zombie. The smell of formaldehyde emanates from this corpse is particularly strong. I didn't identify. I can't. I don't know if you can hear me. It says that you're muted. Uh, I can only identify through a spell and or that you have me muted, I guess I should say. I can't because I don't have the identify spell. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Weird. Um, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This corpse appears to be in an advanced stage of decay. Her jaw is missing and some of the flesh has slid off her skull, revealing the number 1072 chiseled into the bone. It's nice talking to you. Bye. Oh, you have a name. Hello. What are you? Oh, you're in a wheelchair type deal. This corpse has been completely wrapped in bandages like a mummy. Uh, this gate looks sealed shut. There's no lock or other means of opening it. This book is huge. It must contain thousands of names. Hello, sir. This scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow like old parchment. Charcoal gray eyes lie within an angular face and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes like a waterfall. His breathing is ragged and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his quill pen. Greetings. The scribe stops scratching in the book before him, then looks up. His eyes are like two nails driven into a skull. So... He sounds tired, as if he has been repeated, as if he has repeated the same thing many times before. You have awoken from your sleep and returned to your dream. 
He continues more respectfully. Well met again, restless one. Restless one, do you know me? Know you. I... There is a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you have known yourself. He is silent for a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always, the question, and the wrong question as always. He bows slightly, but the movement suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I, he pauses for a moment, catching his breath. I am Dahl. Perhaps you can answer some questions for me, Dahl. Updated my journal. Very well. What did you wish to know? What is this place? You are in the mortuary, restless one, and again you have come. Before he can finish, Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing. After a moment, he calms himself and his breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. <laughs> this is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. Tell me about the mortuary. This is where the dead are brought to be interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead. Those who have left this shadow of life and walk the path of true death. Dahl's voice drops in concern. Your wounds must have exacted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It is almost your home. <laughs> so many questions. Shadow of life? Yes, a shadow. You see, restless one, this life, it is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows flickering of what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die, and here we remain, trapped, caged, until we can achieve the true death. True death? True death is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. Dahl coughs, then gives a ragged breath. A state of purity. It sounds like oblivion. Why would anyone want that? Is it worse than remaining in the shadow of what life once was? I think not. And tell me more about the mortuary. Uh, dustmen? We dustmen are a faction, a gathering of those of us that recognize the illusion of this life. We await the next life and help others on their journey. Maybe you can explain why the dustmen want me dead. It is said that there are souls who can never retain attain the true death. Death has forsaken them. I mean, yeah, basically. I don't know if you saw my Hades playthrough, but death obviously forsakes me. And their names will, shall never be penned in the dead book. To awake from death as you have done suggests you are one of these souls. Your existence is in an unescapable... Your existence is unacceptable to our faction. Unacceptable? That doesn't sound like it leaves me in a good position. You must understand, your existence is a blasphemy to them. Many of our faction would order you cremated if they were aware of your affliction. You're a dustman, but you don't seem to be in favor of killing me. Why not? Because forcing our beliefs upon you is not just. You must give up the shadow of life on your own, not because we force you to. Dahl looks about to break into another coughing jag, but he manages to hold it in with some effort. As long as I remain at my post, I will protect your right to search for your own truth. What is your post? I am a scribe, a cataloger of all the shells that come to the mortuary. Dahl coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. Okay, uh... Sigil? I'm crying again! Shit. Hold on. Sigil is our fair city, restless one. I don't know how I started crying. Did four make me cry? I'm curious. It did. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> wounds? Yes, the wounds that decorate your body. They look as if they would scent. Four was a pretty sad option, to be honest. Yeah, it really was. Um... They look as if they would have sent a lesser man along the path of the true death, yet it seems as if many of them have healed already. Dahl coughs violently for a moment, then studies himself. But those are only the surface wounds. 
Only surface wounds, what do you mean? Updated my journal. I speak of the wounds of the mind. You have forgotten much, have you not? Mayhap your true wounds run much deeper than the scars. I love the journal updated, just floating to the top like an angel going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I speak of the wounds of the mind. You have forgotten much, have you not? Perhaps, mayhaps your true wound run much deeper than the scars that decorate your surface. Doll coughs again. But that is something that only you would know for certain. How did I get here? Doll snorts in contempt as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot ferried you to the mortuary restless one. You would think you were royalty based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? Updated my journal. Yes, your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap, sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses. Ew. Dahl breaks into another violent fit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your seneschal, Farad, was, as always, pleased to accept a few moldy coppers to dump the lot of you at the mortuary gates. Who is this Farad? He is a collector of the dead. Dahl draws a ragged breath and continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those that have walked the path of the true death and bring them to us so that they may be interred properly. Where can I find this Farad? If events persist as they have, Restless One, you have a much greater chance of Farad finding you and bringing you to us again before you find another ooze puddle he wallows in this- whatever ooze puddle he wallows in this time. Nevertheless, I must find him. A slight warning creeps into Dahl's tone. Do not seek out Farad, Restless One. I am certain that it will simply come full circle again. With you none the wiser, and for aught a few coppers richer. Accept death, restless one. Do not perpetuate your circle of misery. Hold on, I have to check something real quick, because I just remembered that I brought an Amazon package in, and if it has my chapstick in it, I need it. It did! Hold on. Oh. Oh my goodness, I'm an idiot. I, my roommates were so nice and I ran out of chapstick and they bought like so many flavored chapsticks. I was actually weirdly excited about them. My cat, very curious about um, the box. I think it's open. Yeah, okay. Look at this. I'm so excited. All right. Sorry. I, I was like, I had only just remembered that I I got it. Like, I, I took it from the kitchen this morning. Set it on my tape on my desk. Completely forgot about it as soon as I sat down. Oh, look at this chapstick. There's so many... I'm so excited. I, I am a chapstick whore. I wear chapstick all of the time. And they got me some pretty fun flavors that I just really want to open them all and just smell them. So I love scented chapstick. Like, I will wear unscented chapstick because obviously chapstick is... You know, you, you use it for the... There's a mango one. I love mango. So we got, and I know this is so exciting for you guys, but I'm sorry. I'm excited about it, so you get to suffer with me. I also wanted to bring my cat cup and put them in it. It'll be for later. We have Aloha Coconut, Key Lime, and Mango. Anybody who knows me knows that I love mango. It is an amazing I I like we all I there I have been dying for Wendy's not for any of the food but I just want to I wish it was feasible to just order a large mango 
I think it's just a mango lemonade that they have. I would order one of those every day. Ooh, this mango is very nice. I love it. All right, so we're putting the mango over here. And oh, look, look, Amber, I have so many chapsticks for you to knock onto the floor. I only know Wendy's from stories. You've never had a Wendy's? That's crazy. Never had a Wendy's. And then we have the s'mores collection, which is graham cracker, milk chocolate, and marshmallow. Oh, you're in Europe? That makes sense. I don't know why I always thought you were somewhere in America. Not in Canada either. Sacrilege. And then we have like the winter slash Christmas collection, which is peppermint, hot chocolate, and sugar cookie. Hmm. So good. But not where I am, I guess. And then we have the spa collection, which is the probably the one that I'm the least excited about. Just because it's got some weird flavors, I think. I don't remember. We have almond oil, rose water, and mint tea. I'm excited about the mint. I love mint. But I also have like six peppermints. Because one of the one of the collections was just three peppermints, which I'm not, or it's technically three candy canes. And then the summer collection, which is peaches and cream, pink lemonade, and sweet watermelon. All of those sound phenomenal as well. I love flavored, like, lip balm. Not flavored, because I don't eat it. I meant, like, scented. I love scented lip balm. It makes me so happy. So I had to take that little detour because I was like, oh, my lips are really chapped, but they're not chapped. They were dry. My, my lips felt very dry and I was like, oh, still don't have any chapstick. Lo and behold, I did usually go for a lemon one. Ooh, yeah. Citrusy fruits like I'm wearing mango right now. I love mango. I know I just said that mango is the best, and it is, but I, I don't think anybody understands my love for mango. I love mango so much. I need to look up what that... I'm pretty sure it's just mango and lemonade, but I need to look it up now. Wendy's menu. Because literally, it was so cheap, and it was a giant, um, like, thing. Like, it... If ordering was free, like if I had free delivery and I didn't have to tip anyone anything and I didn't have to pay any service fees, I would order one of those every day. Like I would be like, okay, this is my like coffee, pineapple mango lemonade. I forgot about the pineapple. It's so good. Oh my God. It's so, and it's somehow only 420 calories. I don't understand how, because it feels, it's 109 carbs, which means that I would not be able to be keto <laughs> anymore. Um, not that I'm strictly keto anymore anyway, but 109 grams of carbs because it's 104 grams of sugar. That thing is sweet. But I love it so much. There is this one in... Oh, oh, you mean like a lemon drink. Right. I thought you meant like a lemon chapstick. And I was like, that's fair. <laughs> um. Oh, my God. It was so good. <laughs> Here, I, I got it. Here you go. Oh, you did mean chapstick. Okay. Because you said caffeine. Does it, does the, 
I should do a Nightbot command. I'm going to do a Nightbot command. Hold on. I'm doing it. You you gave me inspiration, Anzi. Let's go. We're going to do a custom command. We're going to go... Uh, all right. Command variables. It's not what I wanted. I wanted, like... Is it at username? So let's see, like lurk. Not a good pick at username. Clean fifty three lurk. Is that what it is, right? It's yeah, and then lurk two. Clean fifty three. Oops. Lurk two. Look. Oh my god. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, how about this? Work? Nope. Okay, well, the at username didn't work. Uh, how does this... How do you nightbot? <laughs> Many eyes. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I Yeah. Um... I now understand what you meant. Uh, yeah, I don't know when they changed it, um, but they changed it so that in PNG Stuber, what the fuck did I just say? PNG Tuber plus the, the application, even if I'm not tabbed into the application, if I use any numbers, it switches my emotions. So I'm just schizophrenic or bipolar bipolar was what I wanted to say uh okay so how to at user using nightbot there should have been a lot more hearts for Thanatos see I'm bad and I never remember tag user and nightbot response a science and correct ah. success story meet Pat dancing is her thing ah fucking ads I how is this okay oh it's exclam or it's okay it is dollar sign hold on where is it it's dollar sign parenthesis user Close parenthesis. Okay. How about now? Perfect. I fixed. I made a thing. Yeah, I uh, I never remember to use them because I had to like alt tab before. Um, I don't know when this update came out. Um for PNG PNG Tuber Studio. I don't know when the update came out, but it wasn't always a thing. So I had to tab, or at least I didn't think it was always a thing because um, it hasn't been doing it now. Um, so. Um or I hadn't been doing it before. It's only started doing it now. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, uh, I had to tab into the program. I know, I'm so sorry. You'd be fine. Um, but yeah, uh, I would have to tab into the program and obviously I couldn't do that with like games like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and sometimes 3. Um, and then I couldn't do it with Hades because I was using the controller and then if I do remember to do it. And then I forget half the time, so. 
blah, 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 do not blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, do not perpetuate your cycle of misery. Accept death, restless one. I have to find him. Do you know where he Updated is? Updated my journal. Dahl is silent for a moment. When he finally speaks, he seems to do so reluctantly. I do not know under which gutter stone Farad layers at the moment, but I imagine that he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates in the hive. Perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. Doesn't sound like you like Farad much. There are some I respect, restless one. Dahl takes a ragged breath and studies himself. Farad is not one of them. He wears his ill repute like a badge of honor and takes liberties with the possessions of the dead. He is a knight of the post, cross-trading filth of the lower, lower sort. Knights of the post? A knight of the post, Dahl coughs, a thief. All Farad brings to our walls come stripped of a little less of their dignity than they possessed in life. Farad takes whatever he may pry from their stiffened fingers. Did this Farad take anything from me? Dahl pauses, considering. Most likely. Are you missing anything? Especially anything of value? His voice dips as he frowns. Not that Farad would take exception to anything that wasn't physically grafted to your body. And sometimes even that's not enough to give his greedy mind pause. I'm missing a journal. A journal. If it was of any value then it is likely it lies in Farad's hands. I see. I had some other questions. Very well. What did you wish to know? How did I get here? Oh, wait. I did this already. I had some other questions. Can you tell me how to get out of here? Hmm. The front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than the dustman pass. Dahl breaks into a ragged cough, then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it, but it is unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. Well, it's a good thing that I am per extremely persuasive. Uh, do you know who I am? Updated my journal. I know scant little of you, restless one. I know little more of those that have journeyed with you and who now lie in our keeping. I ask that you no longer ask others to join with you, restless one. Where you walk, so walks misery. Let your burden be your own. There are others who have journeyed with me, and they are here. Updated my journal. Do you not know the woman's corpse interred in the memorial hall below? I had thought that she had traveled with you in the past. Dahl looks like he is about to start coughing again, then catches his breath. Am I mistaken? Where is her body? The Northwestern Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Check the buyers there. Her name should be one of the memorial plaques, mayhaps, that will revive your memory. I don't know. I don't recall ever traveling with a woman. Dahl makes no response to this. He simply stares at you in silence. Before, you said there were others interred here who journeyed with me. Where are they? Doubtless there are, but I know not their names, nor where they lie. One such as you has left a path many have walked and few have survived. Doll gestures around you. All dead come here. Some must have traveled with you once. I find no fault with your reasoning. I had some other questions. What do you do here? I am a scribe, a cataloger of all the shells that come to the mortuary. Dahl coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I will remain at my post. Uh, I see. You sound ill, are you not well? I am close now to the true death, restless one. It will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary and find the peace I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal sphere. Dahl gives a ragged sigh. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. The eternal boundary? The boundary between the shadow of this life and the true death. Uh, okay, hold on. I had... Are you certain? There might be some way I could help you. I do not wish to live forever, nor live again, restless one. I could not bear it. So be it. Farewell, Dahl. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. Know this, I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms with it at some point. Your path will return you here. Dahl coughs, the sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all things flesh and bone. Then perhaps we will meet again, Dahl. Perhaps we will meet again.
Oh, well, I've read that already. These barrels contain a murky blah, blah, blah. This body is completely covered in a dark, rough cloth. The corpse has been completely wrapped. Don't mind me as I just steal everything. This walking corpse has the number 1094 carved into its forehead. Its mouth has been sewn tightly shut, and the chemical reek of fresh formaldehyde hangs in an overpowering cloud around it. Despite the pallid, sunken features and lifeless, smoky eyes, it is clear this was once a handsome young man. So, seen anything interesting going on? The corpse continues to stare at you. Leave it alone. The gate looks sealed shut. There is no lock or means of opening it. Well, then why does it exist? So, I need to find a way to go downstairs. Okay, so we go... Hey, Morty, you want to come with me? And do you have anything hey, to talk about? You, Chief. Uh... The corpse is here. Where did they all come from? Death visits the plains every... Okay, he told me that. I want to see you, Chief. How do I use these bandages? You will... You use them. Staunch bleeding and all that. To use the bandages on yourself, right-click on them while in the inventory screen. To use them on another person, first play them in one of your quick item slots on the inventory screen. Next, select the bandages icon from the item quick menu in the world screen and click on your target. Got it. Oh, and I'm crying again. I'm sorry. Right, uh, so I can put these on the quick item? Yeah, here. Got it. Alright. Done. The door's locked. I need a key. Shit. Uh, and I couldn't get this door open either. Okay. Well, then I guess we go back, because there really isn't anywhere else to go. I guess, well, I guess we go this way. I should say not back. Come on, Mort! You lazy bones. What am I gonna do without ya? I can always try to bash the door, but with Strength 9, I don't think that's happening. Uh -huh. I keep forgetting that I can bash doors in video games. I never did it in Baldur's Gate until the end when I lost um, Asterius. Rest in peace. The huge corpse is standing silently in a corner of the room facing the wall. He looks to have been a heavy set man in his early years, and judging by the condition of the body, he died only recently. The freshly stitched number on the forehead reads 1664. This corpse looks like it is serving as a librarian, for it is carrying a huge stack of books in its arms. I love books. Examine the books. The book appear to be old mortuary ledgers, none of them of any particular interest. As you search through the checks, however, you notice a loose page folded between two of the books. You are suddenly struck with the feeling that someone tucked it in there to hide it. Take the page. The page doesn't look like it belongs with the ledgers. It looks like it belongs in a logbook. The tear is clean as if a knife, as if with a knife, so you suspect the page was removed on purpose. You take a moment to read through the page. It is a list of dead bodies brought to the mortuary and logged in the receiving room. All the entries appear to be recent. To read blah blah blah. Okay, examine the body, or the blah 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 again. So how did you come to be a librarian? All the other jobs taken? The corpse stares at me blankly. Bleh. Okay. The ragged page looks like it was cut neatly out of a book. It is written in a tight, crabbed script. 16,530... Oh, God. So many years. Fifth night, drunk, chest wound, cause of death, mauling, abishe. Ab ab Collector, pox, three commons paid, no possessions. 16538, fifth night, desiccated corpse, cause of death, indeterminable, age of shell, prevents identification. Collector, Farad, three commons paid, 
no possessions. Stripped, knife marks evident from desiccation, from dissection. 16, 539, fifth night. Scarred shell, cause of death, indeterminable. Scars do not appear to be cause of death. Shock trauma. Collector Farad, three commons paid possessions logged. Fist irons, 13 commons, middle table receiving room. That's me. Apparently I had fist irons. Also, where did my sound go? 16540, fifth night, desiccated corpse number two, cause of death indeterminable, age of shells prevents identification, collector Farad, three commons paid, possessions logged, knife marks evident from dissection, but the dissection was not thorough enough, copper earring found lodged in abdomen, earring has been locked in southeast preparation room, have an initiate from the third circle, examine it, it has strange markings like those on contracted worker 79 16 541 fifth night skeleton cause of death indeterminable age of shell prevents identification collector farad three commons paid no possessions stripped question mark knife marks evident from dissection as with the previous entries these shells has brought all <sighs> As with the previous entries, these shells Farad has brought also show signs of having been prepared. I have asked that initiate Emmerich launch an investigation into the matter. Furthermore, entry 16542 is one of Farad's gang. I have seen the individual before. I would ask Emmerich to pay heed to how the man died. Who's 16542? Is that me? No. Okay. This is pre-writing. Okay. Tiefling. Male. The cause of death slash marks discoloration of wounds are consistent with grave rot ghoul claws. Collector Farad, three commons paid, no possessions. Stripped. Nice marks evident from dis dissection. Ground! <laughs> I'm not a part of your system. Oh god. Bandage, ya yoink. Oh, hello. You're alive. Or at least you're standing, I should say. Well, okay, I should say you have a name, is what I meant. The stench coming from this corpse is truly nauseating. Someone split open the man's chest and has yet to remove the internal organs. Gross. Don't mind me as I just go through all these things. This chalk white body has been drained of blood and has been treated with embalming fluid. A nearly stitched, a neatly stitched seam runs down the corpse's chest. The eyes of the corpse are set close together and the eyeballs themselves are slightly askew. One faces to the left. Oh god. My chapstick is going insane. Uh and the other to the right. You can barely make out the number 257 traced into its bruised forehead. It looks like the corpse has, been ta has taken several blows to the head, making the number difficult to read. I want to see corpse number one. Don't you get dizzy from your eyeballs facing like that? The worker... There is no flicker of understanding in the corpse's eye. They stare silently off to the left and right. Another corpse on a stone slab. There is no indication what the body died from. The heavily stitched corpse is shuffling lazily back and forth between two slabs. The number 506 has been stitched on its forehead and the number and the, and the side of its neck and its right arm. In fact, the skin of this peeling corpse has been sewn up so many times with so many stitches, its skin looks like a bizarre street map. Examine the stitches. The stitches encircle the corpse, running from its arms across its chest, up its neck, and into the damp mass of white hair. As you follow the crossroads of stitches, you notice someone has jammed a needle into the corpse's forehead. The needle is attached to a thread, stitching up the side of the skull. You could probably unravel it if you had something to cut the thread. Cut the stitches with my scalpel, then pull out the thread and needle. You slice the thread neatly with the scalpel and then pluck out the needle and pull the stitches out. As you do, the skin carved into the forehead peels back to reveal the corpse's chalk white skull, where to your surprise, the number 78 has been chiseled. 
Seems you have two designations there, corpse. The corpse stares straightly ahead. Oops. The bandages covering this body are soaked with blood. Even though this corpse looks several days dead, blood still trickles from its wounds. This corpse, 985, has stopped dead in its tracks, judging from the condition of its left leg. It looks as if some sort of tomb rot or corpse mold has eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its balance. Uh, try to help the corpse balance. You reach out from the corpse's left arm to help steady it. As you grab its arm, however, the corpse suddenly sways to the right, and you end up tugging the corpse farther than steadying it. Uh, Chief, you might not what. There is a creak from the corpse's left leg and the body falls like a dead tree. The corpse strikes a stone flagstone and shatters like a rotten melon, filth and ichor gurgling from the cavity. To your surprise, no one seems to have noticed the corpse's collapse, and even stranger, the left leg remains standing where the body was, as if at attention. After a moment, the leg falls over with a wet thumb. As you gaze upon the petrifying remains of the corpse, you notice that its left arm seems intact. It has snapped from the torso during the fall and it doesn't appear to have been touched by the tomb rot that has spread through the rest of the body hmm I wonder if I can make use of that arm well it's mine now I don't know what I need this arm for but I'm sure I'll need it later hello you see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck makes her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a finger. Greetings. The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons. They are darting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives, removing organs. I said greetings. The woman makes no response. I think the dusty chip might be a bit short of here in chief. Let's lay off, shall we? What's wrong with her hands? Updated my journal. Eh, she's a tiefling, chief. They got fiend blood in their veins. Usually because some ancestor of theirs she had knickers with one demon or another. Makes some of them addled in the head. An addled looking too. Okay, I'll leave her alone. Interesting. Blood stains, blah, blah, blah. Allows it to be rotated. The shambling corpse gazes at you with, a vacant, with vacant eyes. The number 821 is carved into its forehead and its lips have been stitched closed. So, seen anything interesting going on? As you address the zombie, it blinks in surprise. Eh, what? You're not a zombie. Who are you? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a peculiar, half-frightened, half-angry expression. Who are you? What do you want? I'm looking for a way out of here. Can you help me? The zombie doesn't seem to have heard you. He looks you up and down for a few moments and frowns. What you do here? His eyes narrow suspiciously. You spy on dust trees? I'm not a spy. I got sealed in here by accident. Can you help me out? He is silent for a moment, then nods slightly, as if in understanding. Why should I help you? Maybe we could help each other out. What do you want in return? Uh, need to get a key for me. Want iron key to embalming room. All right, where is the key? A dusty chin has it. He points at his eyes. She has yellow eyes. She's been making a motion with his hands that reminds you of a pair of cutting shears. Blades on hands. A dustman woman with yellow eyes and blades on her fingers. All right, then. I'll be back with the key. What is with this? What is with the horny options? Like, I know that I got bonked a lot for Hades, but like... Updated my journal. The zombie squints at you. If you're caught, don't say nothing about me. 
or me got you in your sleep. I'll be back. And I'm assuming that... Did she have yellow eyes? I can't remember. I know that she had talons for hands. Uh, pale features. Greetings. Yeah, 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 tap the woman, get her attention. The woman jumps, yes, her eyes are yellow. The woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are a rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from a surprise to irritation and she frowns at you. Uh, greetings? She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting as if she can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes makes her terribly nearsighted. You, she clacks her talon fingers together, then makes a strange motion with her hand. Find thread and embalming fluid. Bring here to Avian. Go, go, go. You have been assigned a quest. Quests are displayed in your diary. And in the, it's a journal, not a diary. And in the quest portion of your journal, to see all the quests that have been assigned and their status, simply select quests from the journal menu. I had some questions first. Updated my journal. She turns away. She makes no sign that she heard you. Okay. Okay, so I have the thread already. Use... Oh, shit. Don't want to part with that. Uh, what? What did I do? I... I used it, but nothing happened. Oh, I have tattoos? It just... It said I could use, and then it just disappeared. I put it somewhere? My blind AF? Uh... It's a heal item? Shit! Was- okay, so here's- when was the last time- I was literally telling myself, idiot, save your game. It's a heal item. Okay, well, I learned my lesson. Did I need that for that quest? It doesn't matter because I'm not restarting. I'm just curious. I'm assuming not. I figure the game wouldn't fuck me that hard. I bet you can find another one in here. Okay. Then I won't worry about it. <laughs> So I have to go find her embalming fluid and thread. Dried blood surf, uh, covers the slab surface. Nothing. Dried blood. The blood on the table is still fresh. Someone has inserted a tube into this corpse's leg. The tube is attached to a strange clicking machine next to the slab. Return the slab. Okay, so we got embalming fluid. A bloody cloth covers the remains of this corpse. The stench rising is unbearable. I thought like I could separate it somehow. Smells like formaldehyde. This container is locked. Okay. This door is locked. Mortuary third floor. Okay. I wondered if there was a... Oh, it did autosave. How nice of them. All right. Oh, I didn't realize that these were... Charcoal charm. What is that? 
This piece of charcoal is a charred bone fragment of some creature, perhaps a finger bone or a talon. Various symbols have been scratched onto its surface. The scratchings are so faint you almost miss them. This charcoal charm temporarily protects the user against flames and extreme heat. To use the charm, the charred bone is snapped and both halves are ground to powder. Then the charcoal dust is rubbed over the heart of the user. Okay, so it's a temporary thing. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. There'd be skeletons. The skeleton number 748, according to the number chiseled above its brow, is odd only in the same in that some of its teeth appear to be false ones made of reddish brown stone. They're clearly not valuable, however, as its caretakers would have otherwise removed them. <laughs> Why the smack? I can also quick save with what button? I hit F5 and it didn't do anything. Um, examine the skeleton carefully. Someone has taken care to bind the bones of the skeleton with leather scraps. Q, most likely. Okay. Um... Woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. The straps are secured to metal bolts punched into the skeleton's joints. The skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul-smelling glues. Why would I do that? Leave him alone. Hmm, I wonder if this graybeard would mind if I borrowed his body. Graybeard? Well... Or Greybeard, you know, Giza, old fella, yellow dog, old. <laughs> well, I don't think he's in any position to object. Why not take his body? Morty Stubble studies Stubbles studies the skeleton for a moment, then shakes his head. Nah, I need a fresher one than this, and something with a little more dignity. This one's all creaky and fractured. All right, then let's go. So you want a better skeleton so you can be useful. Oh, it's a dustman. Hello. The dustman regards you with a stony gaze. Are you lost? Yes. <laughs> I will summon a guard to direct you out. Hold a moment. Okay. Uh, leave quickly. The dustman takes a step back then claps his hands together sharply three times. In response, a giant iron bell starts tolling throughout the mortuary. All right, then. Shit. Well, I guess we murder. No, I don't want to murder everybody. Oh, Morty can help me. Oh. oh, why is everybody? Is the whole room mad at me forever? Dustman robes, bronze. Ooh. I might. I did just quick save, so. But I don't want the whole universe to be mad at me. Shit. Wooden club wooden club. Ooh. I don't have to double click. Okay. Uh, well. I should have known better. Ooh, a needle and thread. Chaotic evil playthrough here. No, I don't. I tried so hard. I wanted to be a good person. charm. Also, I'm picking up knives. I don't need this many knives. Heals 9 hit points. 5 resistance to splashing attacks. 10 resistance to piercing. This glistening blood drop is as hard and smooth as a pearl. When placed on the tongue, it dissolves instantly and spreads through the user's bloodstream. 
The charm stimulates the user's blood into clotting and scabbing over existing wounds, healing any minor damage the user may have suffered before consuming the charm. Furthermore, as long as the charm is in effect, the player's blood becomes more aware of new wounds that occur, especially any attacks that draw blood. The charmed individual becomes more resistant to slashing and piercing attacks as their blood clots and scabs over the wound as soon as the fresh flesh is torn. Well, shit. Memory tasks, dustman embalming charm lesser. Usable only on Nameless One and Morty. This strange metal bracelet has directions inscribed on the side of it. Judging from the crude text, it appears that the bracelet works by being held by a living creature. Then while pronouncing a mantra to, the, mantra to the true death, it is touched to the forehead of a zombie or skeleton. When this is done, the minor enchantment held within the item spreads throughout the corpse, strengthening their bones, killing traces of corpse rot and grave mold, and helping to seal minor wounds. This item will work on either you or more. Simply place it on your quick item slot, then use it from the quick menu on Mort or have Mort use it on you in order for it to take effect. When cast, the target gains temp HP and temp bonus to AC for a half hour. The extra hit points will heal the target that is less blah 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 blah. Okay. Someone has penned a series of tasks in red ink on this scrap of parchment. I would like the contracted workers to be inspected thrice daily at the end of each work shift when the new initiates come on duty. We have experienced too many contracted collapses while engaged in heavy labor as of late, and I fear the embalming enchantments initially used on the corpses may be decaying or may have warped somehow. If the contracted workers would be could be inspected every eight hours and raised if they have collapsed, then this would prevent the backlog of shells in the preparation room and free up more contracted workers for other duties. I do not wish collapsed bodies to be disposed of. When possible, the original contracted shell are to be raised and to be made to resume their duties. I have included spare embalming charms within the shelves of the initiates on duty. They are to be used only when the shells cannot be repaired with stitching, bandaging, or applications of embalming fluid. Okay. Oh. Okay, so just everything is angry at me? Alright, then hold on. I don't want everything to be angry at me. I get it load okay so we just we just don't talk to the dustman i'm gone which makes sense i could kill him in the dialogue i know but i didn't want to <laughs> you there hold oh shit this skeleton seems particularly old. The leather straps binding it together, cracked and worn, the word repent have been carefully engraved onto its forehead with some amount of skill. A rougher hand later chiseled 996 onto both its temples. Pardon me, have you seen any skeletons walking around here? Someone has taken care to bind the bones of the skeleton with leather straps woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and- Okay, I don't know that one. Uh... Hmm, I wonder if this blah blah blah. Pray, pray. I'm holding. Am I lost? No. If I'm not lost, then what of your business here? Uh... I awoke on some of the slabs in your preparation room. <laughs> Do you speak in jest? Perhaps you would like to share it with the guards. Snaz neck! <laughs> Before the dustman can utter a word, your hands clamp onto his temples and you twist his head sharply to the left. Can't have you all alerting your friends. There's a crack and the dustman falls limp in your arms. Better you than me. To your surprise, the act seems instinctual, as if you had done it before many times. But this thought comes to the stirring of a memory. It is not strong enough to surface. Hello. I hope you didn't mind me just murdering that man. Only dex build things. <laughs> I have a knife! No! 
I think she's walking towards me menacingly. Uh, so, okay, one to three piercing damage, one to three slashing damage, one to three, two to four crushing damage. Okay. A knife! No! I'm a dustman. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, okay. These frayed robes are com commonly worn by members of the dustman faction. They have an old musty smell about them and they don't fit you very well. You doubt the dustman disguise will hold up under scrutiny and certainly not if the dustmen are looking for an intruder. The dustman robes are a cosmetic disguise. Even though you appear to be armed with a dagger, you will do damage according to the weapon you had equipped when you put the disguise on. If you switch weapons while the disguise is on, the robe disguise will be nullified and you must re-equip it. Why? If you end up alerting the mortuary to your presence or turning the dustman hostile, the disguise will not hide you. They are useless outside of understood. Don't mind me, I'm just a dustman. Go about your business, ma'am. Needle and thread. Nothing to see here. I am but a dustman. Many needles and threads. Junk. But they seem pretty useless to me. Understood. Despite this corpse's dry, leathery skin, it is clear that it was once a beautiful woman of middle years. Whomever prepared the body seemed to take pity on her, sewing her bow lips shut with small neat stitches and tattooing the number 832 upon her forehead cut in elegant script you leave her alone morty she's dead and i get that you are too but come on the reanimated corpse had its lips sewn together and the numbers 310 310 carved into its brow the smell of formaldehyde permeates in the area around it as you move to bar its path. Leave the corpse alone. I'm leaving the corpse alone. Also, all right, it is Q, okay. A crowbar? To use the pry bar to force a locked, ooh. Yoink! A crowbar? You don't know what the heck happened to my voice. Oh. I didn't want to equip the weapon, idiot. I just... Alright. Dustman request. Contact the necromancer responsible for raising contractual worker 42. I know he's examined the skeleton before, but I'm certain the initial raising of the body was warped. The worker still responds to commands, but when it has completed a task, it resumes pacing in the same circular pattern as it did before. Dahl recently informed me that worker 42 exhibited that same walking pattern when it was a zombie decades ago. There may be a soul echo in the marrow, or the skeleton's age may have caused the magic animating him to decay. One of the initiates suggested it may be following an order issued by a high-ranking dustman in the past, but I have found no records of such an order. Whatever the reason for its behavior, the matter is to be resolved or the worker replaced. What does it matter if he finishes his work and then he just walks in a circle? Leave the man alone. He just wants to walk in a circle. Let him walk. Also, I... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to select me. Ah, you can see my lower half. I was just looking to see if there was maybe like a better place to put me, but I'm always going to block something as usual, so... Just leave it alone. Uh, D I didn't. <sighs> I 
Is it A? Forced it. Got it. Clock charm. Yay. I can unlock locked things now because I got a crowbar. The corpse's meaty head has clearly severed at some point and hastily sewn back on. Several different sets of stitching, all in various states of unraveling, seem to be indica seem to indicate that the head is constantly being knocked back off and reattached during the course of its work. A number 79 has been cut into its temple, circum circumscribed by a fanged circle that appears to have been branded on its forehead. Examine the fanged circle. The fanged circle looks like it was branded on the corpse's forehead long ago, presumably before it died. It might be a religious icon of some sort or a rite of passage. You notice that one of the recesses between the inner fangs has a small triangle within it, as if it has a special significance. Hmm, interesting. How did that mark it there, corpse? Updated my journal. The corpse makes no reply. It looks like it is too far gone to answer any of my questions. This looks to be the corpse of a well-aged, even ancient woman. Aside from the embalming fluid stink, the stitches sealing her mouth and the number 679 stitched into her right cheek, it's likely she looks only slightly different now than she did in her final years. That's not very nice. This animated skeleton smells horrible, as if it had only freshly been as if it had been only freshly stripped and prepared. Its jaw and major joints are tightly bound with leather straps, and a rough smock has been thrown over it. The number one two two one has been chiseled into its forehead. Examine the skeleton carefully. Someone has taken care of blah 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 blah. This skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service, but it said it was brand new. What about this skeleton, Maury? Will it do for a body? Okay. It said that it was brand new, and then it said that it wasn't. I'm being trolled by the video game. Zombie worker. So. Zombie worker. The number 613 are cut deeply into the plodding corpse's forehead, but an inch of shredded leathery skin separates the one and the three. Looking closely, you can barely make out a two carp there. So it's 6123? Huh. Mortuary Sanctum Key. Okay. I don't know where that is. Ooh. What is this? Okay. A hammer? The number 1146 is carved into the forehead of this walking corpse. Its lips are sewn together with coarse black thread. The entire body is covered in horrible scars, worse even than your own, as if its owner had been buried to death. A burned to death. Buried to death. Its nose, ears, and several digits are missing, presumably charred away in some long-ago conflagration. As you block its path to get its attention, it stops and gazes at you with vacant eyes. Uh, this skeleton has either seen a great deal of combat or has fallen down one too many staircases. Both its arms and legs have been broken and rebuilt with the aid of leather straps and thin iron rods. The front of its skeleton bears the number 863, but the back of the skull has caved in, forming an empty cavity. You notice that someone has taken advantage of this and tucked a rolled up piece of parchment inside the skull. Take the parchment out of the skeleton skull. You slip the parchment out of the worker's skull. Oddly enough, it looks as if the skull cavity is intended to store messages. A tiny string is attached to the parchment from a hook bolted inside the skull, as if to keep the parchment from accidentally falling out. Unhook the string and take the parchment. 
You unhook the string and glance over the parchment. It looks like a reminder from one of the mortuary custodians. Judging from the note, the skeleton seems to be a walking messenger of sorts. As you take a second glance at the skeleton, you realize it has stopped in front of the slab because it can't figure out how to move past it. Examine the skeleton again. Okay. This rolled up piece of parchment appears. This is the third and last request for the pry bar. If it has been misplaced, tell me and I shall go to the hive market and purchase another. I have no objection to maintaining the contracted workers, but I've been trying to repair the skeletons and the bolts are wedged in so tight I can't get them out. Also, some of the locks on the storage cabinets on the third floor have been struck again due to the heat. And I need the pry bar to snap them open as well. If the pry bar is ind indeed lost, I will see about procuring the services of a blacksmith and having the cabinet locks replaced. Your aid in this matter would be appreciated. An unreadable signature has been scrawled beneath the message. Well, I have that pry bar already. It is not lost. It's been stolen. By me. Okay. Junk. These were what I looked at before, before I stupidly got myself forced it. Forced it. Corpse fly charm. This corpse fly looks like it was frozen. It appears to be dead, but you can't be sure. The magic contained within the charm is activated when the insect is consumed. When swallowed, the recipient suddenly becomes extremely nauseous. A few seconds later, the charmed individual expels a stream of insects from their nose and mouth. Provided the charmed individual can keep their wits about them after the casting, the caster can send the cloud to attack a target. Gross. Bone charm. This old finger bone charm has been hollowed out and tiny symbols have been scratched on its surface. A user must snap it in two to activate it. When snapped, uh, the ch bone charm temporarily strengthens the user's skeleton and acts as a ward against the breaks and fractures. The charm gives the user an overall bonus to their armor class and additional resistance against crushing attacks. I'll take it. Okay, so I have embalming fluid. Does one of the needles and thread count as thread? Okay, so done. Forced it. Oh, I didn't read that. Ancient copper earring closed. This copper earring looks ancient. Oddly enough, there doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. A series of strange grooves have been carved on the side of the earring, however, which might... If you're ever capable of examining an object further... Yeah, but I'm... there isn't one. Is it because I'm not... Oh, it's, oh my god, that's a little annoying. The copper earring looks extremely old. It looks like it was meant to be worn, but there doesn't seem... Okay, well, I want to examine the grooves first. The grooves are evenly spaced along the inside of the earring. Upon close examination, they remind you of small fangs. They are definitely man-made, but you can't figure out what they are intended for. Insert your fingernail into the notch that matches where the triangle was pointing in the fang circle you saw on Zombie79's forehead. Thankfully, my character has a much better memory than I do. You hook your fingernail into the third groove on the top and press it inward. As I do, there is a click and the top of the earring snaps open. Not only can you wear the earring now, it also looks like there is a secret compartment inside the earring. Shake the earring and see if anything comes out. You shake the earring, but nothing comes out. Whatever was hidden in the earring is gone now. Discovering the latch of the earring will now allow you to wear it. In addition, the secret compartment may make the earring, the earring more valuable to a merchant. Interesting. I have two ears. Morty, do you want to... Oops. 
Uh, Forty, do you want an earring? You can't wear an earring. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll hold on to it for now. And then when you get ears... Oh, that's right. You don't have any ears. That was very insensitive of me. I'm sorry. I forgot that you don't have any ears. Awkward. All right, so... Oh, I never finished exploring this place. There was a door down here that I never opened. Blah, blah, blah. The especially ghastly looking female corpse is missing its ears, nose, and lips. In order to sew her mouth, her jaw closed, Whoever prepared her had to draw the skin especially tight around her mouth. You can still see a line of crooked yellow teeth through the open slit that remains. The number 891 has been carved into the flesh of her brow. So, see anything lately? Farewell, then. Oh, there's something on the ground. Cleaning rags. Okay. Okay. Okay, was there anything that was locked in here? It doesn't look like it. Okay. So, well, except for that door, but I'm not worried about that door right now. I'm worried about... Did I go up or down? I can't remember. Oh. Oh, I don't want to be here, so... I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, and this is where I just came from. Wait, hold on. I'm now lost somehow. Hold on, hold on. Where did I start from? Am I dumb? Well, this was was this the floor I started on? I thought there was like a a door like to like down that I couldn't get into. Was I Where did I come from? If you look Okay, hold on. If you click on the icon on top of the question mark, you can turn the quick loop panel. Oh. I knew that. Cuz I read about quick loop and then immediately forgot about it. Well, I definitely didn't have that open. Shit, where did I come from? How did I get into this room? Like, this floor? Where did I... Where did I originate from? Because it wasn't upstairs. Right? I started on this floor? I did? Oh, was this door shut from, like, the other side? Is that how that worked? It was like I could open it because I came from the other other side of it? Like, I couldn't go this way, but I could go this way. Oh, well, you can't see my cursor, actually. Hold on. I forgot about that. I fix. I took it off for Hades, because... Or I took it off for something. Or it was the key I looted upstairs? Ah, that would make sense. That would be smart, and thus, I didn't know about it. <laughs> Alright. Sorry, didn't realize you couldn't see my cursor the whole time. Forgot about it, because I turned it off for Baldur's Gate, because I was like, oh, I keep leaving it in the center of the screen during cutscenes. Okay, so I've unlocked everything. Upstairs and downstairs. I thought there were more things that were locked here. I guess I'm remembering it incorrectly. Oh, come on. Let's shake a leg. Shut well, I mean, up. You shake a leg. Haha. Uh -huh. Very funny. All right. So I guess we do have to go down. I don't know where we are. Oh, there we are. I guess we could go here then. I guess we got to go down then. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I lied. All right. We maybe can go talk to what's her face? Done. Because I have needle and thread. Does that count as thread? Mm -hmm. 
You see Evine. She is still dissecting the corpse's chest with her talons. The rhythm of the talons reminds you of something, but you can't quite recall. Watch her. Study the motions of her Updated hands. my journal. As you study the motion of Evine's hands, you feel a prickling along your scalp, and then suddenly you find your vision swimming, blurring, until... You are standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, rigor mortis making a mockery of its smile. The number 42 has been stitched into its scalp. The zombie is laying on a slab, and you have just finished stitching up its chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove useful if you come this way again. Keep these things safe and wait for my return. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow to your ears. You cross your arms in front of your chest, and to your surprise, the corpse does too. After a moment, its hands fall to its sides, and as it does, the vision fades, until you are watching Yvine's hands make their stitching motions once again. I have gained a memory. Have I met someone with the number 42, though? Ugh. She turns and sees you, then frowns. Dumb zombies. She clacks her talons together impatiently. Um, sorry, I was reading the options and got distracted. She clacks her talon fingers together impatiently, then makes a stitching motion with her fingers. Find thread and embalming fluid. Bring here to Evie. Go, go, go. Give her the thread and embalming fluid. Updated my journal. Without missing a beat, Evine snaps the thread from your hand, snaps the okay, and hooks it around one of her talons, then begins sewing up the corpse's chest. She then takes the embalming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. Wait. Within minutes, she is finished. She clicks her talons, then turns to face you. To your surprise, she extends her hand and drags talons along your arms and chest. Uh, keep playing zombie. Looks like you have a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together or keep playing zombie. As she traces your arms and chest, you suddenly notice she seems to be examining your scars. She withdraws her talons, clicks them twice, then bends forward and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmm. Who write on you? Hivers do that. Or hivers. Hivers. Hivers do that. You suspect... You respect... No, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. You who write? Oh my God! Restart. Hmm. Who write on you? Hivers do that. No respect for zombies. Zombies, not paintings. She sniffs, then pokes one of your scars. This one, bad shape. Many scars. No preserves. Wait. Her talons suddenly hook into the thread you brought her, and lightning-like, she jabs another talon into the skin near one of your scars. It feels barely more than a pinprick, but looks like she's about to start stitching you up. I'll let her work and see what it Updated does. Updated my journal. The sensation... Ooh, look at my max HP! The sensation is curiously painless as Evine begins to stitch up your scars. When she is done, she sniffs you, frowns, and stabs her fingers into the embalming fluid. Within minutes, she has dabbed your body with the fluid, and strangely enough, it makes me feel better. Let her work. This may be the second time in my life I'm thankful I don't have a nose. Yvine puts the last touches on your body, gives you another sniff, nods, and makes a shooing motion with her talons. Done. Go. Wait a minute. You make a motion of a key turning with your hand. I need an embalming key. Do you have one? She leans forward, looks at your hand motions, and sniffs. She hand, her hand darts into her robes and emerges, a key hanging from her wickedly sharp index finger. She flicks it into your hand. Bring back when done. Go, go. Updated my journal. Okay, and then it was a zombie in here, I think, that wanted it. Hello? Are you real? You see the false zombie. You're amazed at the man's disguise. His breathing is so subdued you can barely see it. Greetings. The zombie quickly glances around to see if anyone is watching, then turns to face you. What? Here's the room key you wanted. The zombie's eyes widen, and then he snatches a key from your hand. He turns it over, nodding all the while. Good, good. Now, how do I get out Updated of here? Updated my journal. The zombie groans. You can escape through portals. He waves his hands. Foof. Portals? What portals? Portals. The zombie waves around the area. Portals everywhere. Can you show me one of these portals? The zombie nods. You want out? Go to Ark on first floor, northwest room. 
You need finger bone, shape of crook. He holds up his index finger and bends it into a crook. When you have key, go to arch. Jump to secret crypt and can escape from here. Secret escape route. He nods eagerly. You can rest there. And I had some other questions. Updated my journal. What you want to know? Uh, do you know someone named Farad? Farad? The zombie frowns briefly in thought. Me? Here he live in high somewhere. He shakes his head. Not nowhere. He frowns again. Dusty's very, very mad. They don't like Farad. Hive? The slums outside the place. Why don't the dustmen like Farad? Updated my journal. He's a collector. Brings debtors to mortuary. Sells them to dustmen. Brings lots of debtors. Dusty's not know where he gets debtors. Think he's putting Burks in dead book. Uh, what? He's saying that this Farad Burke has been selling a lot of debtors, corpses, to the dustmen. That's what collectors do. They gather dead bodies and sell them to the dustmen. Sounds like this Farad's been selling so many debtors that the Dusties thinks he's been putting hivers in the dead book before their hours up. You know, killing people. I see. Um... I'm missing a journal. Have you seen it? Don't know. Some Burke Pelia? Uh, what? He wants to know if somebody robbed you. Probably what happened. I see. Uh, can you tell me anything about Doll? Scribe. Old. Yellow. There's nothing more to be said, I suppose. How did you get to look like that? Me good at disguises. Me also got scars. We well, looks like embalming fluid. Me make good zombie. The zombie giggles through stitched lips, then taps his head. Does she stupid? Yeah, they're the stupid ones, all right. The sarcasm is evidently lost on the zombie, who nods eagerly. Stupid dusties. Me make good zombie. Doesn't that hurt? He looks at your scars. I ask you the same question. Me? It not hurt much. He claps his chest. Me tough. Fair enough. Why am I getting bonked? What did I do? <laughs> what did I do this time? All right. We have to go downstairs. We have to find a woman, apparently. Oh, wait. No, no, no. In case, I don't know, in case I missed something bonk worthy. I swear I didn't do anything worth getting bonked. Everybody here is dead, so there's nobody to simp over yet. But don't worry, I'll get there. Uh, so there was someone, Done. I've been told by Pedro, that there was someone labeled 42. Uh, pardon me. Oh wait, you're alive again! Didn't I kill you? Uh, how about the skeleton? Okay. Uh, leave the corpse alone. Yeah, but he's weird. You know, they say that a man stops thinking they only have enough, uh, like, blood to go to the brain or the penile region, but he doesn't have one, so why is he so weird? <laughs> what is the nature of a man, a miserable pile of secrets? A zombie worker? Oh, you look different. Okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, oh, you're a dustman. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, ah, 42. The skeleton turns to face you. 42 has been chiseled into its forehead. 
I think this is the corpse I had a memory about. At the sound of your voice, the skeleton suddenly straightens up. It crosses its arms over its chest, and its fingers lock into its ribcage. Cross your arms over your chest. In response, the skeleton drops its arms to its sides. The leather cord securing the skeleton's torso snap, and the ribcage folds outward like a pair of double doors. Reach into the ribcage and feel around. To your surprise, your hand vanishes as you reach inside the ribcage. You have a strange feeling it's somewhere else. As you reach inside the ribcage, your hand bumps against an invisible object. It's about the size of a fist and seems to be attached to the skeleton's spine. Take the item out. Oh, sorry. As you pull the item out, the skeleton suddenly disintegrates and the iron bolts securing its joints clatter to the floor. Whatever the item was, it seems to have been the only thing holding it together. Examine the item. It looks like a unremarkable lump of iron. You can't imagine why someone would hide it inside the ribcage of a skeleton. As you place both your hands on the lump of iron to examine it, there is a hiss and the metal evaporates, leaving behind a strange dagger, a handful of coins wrapped in a dirty cloth, and two bloody teardrops. These look like they were inside the lump of iron. Take the items and leave. Can I have your bolts? Shit. Okay. So what did we get? Why do I have so many rags? Green steel knife. Oh god. Don't mind me. Uh... Hmm... What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. But enough of this. I'm out of here. <laughs> Shout out to anybody who understands that reference. You're my friend. Alright. Now we can go down. Okay, a uh, zombie worker. This doddering corpse has had its eyes sewn shut as well as its mouth, and the number 732. <laughs> well, I I hope you understand because the reference is some is weirdly a reference that's referencing something else. But if you get what reference I'm talking about. You're a bro. <laughs> uh, the stoddering corpse has had its eyes sewn shut as well as its mouth, and the number 732 is carved into its brow. The thread work that keeps its ocular cavity sealed shut looks extremely old. You wonder if the eyes were sewn shut before or after the man's death. You notice he is carrying a huge tome in his hands, as if taking it somewhere. Take the homes from take take the homes. Take the tome from his hands carefully. You take the tome from the corpse's hands. It doesn't seem to notice. The tome appears to be a book of enchantments and wards. It is filled with diagrams and charts detailing various aspects of the necromantic arts. The book itself is extremely heavy. As awkward as a zombie is, it must be extremely strong. Examine the corpse again. Uh, okay. Leave it alone. This worn leather bound tome lists blah, 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 blah. There are blah, 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 blah. Of particular interest is the section regarding guardians. Apparently the dustmen animate corpses of fallen giants to serve as guardians for the mortuary. To make them even deadlier, armoring enchantments are woven into their breastplates to help shield them from attacks. This book is much too complex for me to absorb all at once, but it looks as if I could refer to certain sections when the need arises. Tome of Bone and Ash. I have so much money. Where did I get all this money from? What the heck? This metallic blue tapestries are made of thin chain links. Done. That's cool, I guess. I don't know why I'm going counterclockwise. But that's the decision I've made, so... I see... A male corpse with the number 331 chiseled into his skull. His eyes and lips are stitched closed, and then is a gaping hole torn in his throat. He smells foul. This smells foul. 
This is a heavy barred gate of rusted steel. There doesn't appear to be any way of opening it. There is an odd symbol on this plaque. It looks like a screaming skull with sharp blades protruding from its sides. There's a reanimated male corpse. This, oh my god. This reanimated male corpse has the numbers 1041 carved into its forehead. Despite its taut, desiccated flesh, it is apparent that its features once had the rather exotic cast to them. The zombie's lips have been stitched closed, most likely to prevent it from moaning incessantly, and it smells strongly of formaldehyde. Oh, I was wondering why they were all sewn shut. That would make sense. Got zombies everywhere, it would be just insufferable. If they were just all moaning all the time. And I know that I could talk to the dustman, but I don't know if I should. This woman's corpse pauses in its trudging about as you approach. You notice the number 114 is carved into its forehead. Her mouth has been sewn shut, but the threading is slowly coming loose and faint moans issue from between her lips. Okay. This led nowhere and had no purpose. I guess maybe we can go in here. A giant skeleton? Well, let's just save this game real quick. <laughs> Spooky. A crescent hatchet. Let's not take anything and anger the giant skeletons. Especially because I don't need any weapons right now. Oh, there was an opening. Oh! Now I'm thinking with portals. But also, I'm not ready to go yet. The plaque on this beer says, Here lies Dianera. This looks like a large tomb. The marble surface gives it a rather elegant look. You see a strikingly beautiful ghostly form before you. Her arms are crossed and her eyes are closed. She has long flowing hair and her gown seems stirred by some ethereal breeze. As you watch, she stirs slightly and her eyes flicker. Wait. You! What is it that brings you here? Have you come to see firsthand the misery you have wrought? Perhaps in death I still hold some shred of use for you. My love. Jennifer Hale? Her eyes slowly open and she blinks in confusion for a moment, as if uncertain where she is. She looks around slowly, then sees you. Her tranquil face suddenly twists into a snarl. My love, do I know you? The spirit makes a begging motion with her hands. How can it be that the thieves of the mine continue to steal my name from your memory? Do you not remember me, my love? The ghost stretches out her arms. Think. Her eyes become desperate again. The name, Dianara, must evoke some memory within you. No, I'm sorry. My memories are lost to me. Then it is as I feared. I am truly lost to you. And what was once an inconvenience for you, you now have the excuse to discard me, as you have my memory. I think I feel the stirrings of a memory. Tell me more. Perhaps your words shall chase the shadows from my mind, Dianera. Oh, at last the fates show mercy. Even death cannot chase me from your mind, my love. Do you not see? Your memories shall return. Tell me how I can help you, and I shall. Do you know who I am? You are one both blessed and cursed, my love, and you are one who is never far from my thoughts and heart. Blessed and cursed, what do you mean? The nature of your curse should be apparent, my love. Look at you, she points at you. Death rejects you. T tell me about it. Your memories have abandoned you. Do you not pause and wonder why? I'm still trying to get my bearings, actually. What else can you tell me about myself? I know that you once claimed you loved me, and that you would love me until death claimed us both. I believed that, never knowing the truth of who you were, what you were, and what am I. You... I cannot just tell you the plot of this game already. 
She suddenly freezes, and she speaks slowly, carefully, as if her voice frightens her. The truth is, you are one who dies many deaths. Those deaths have given the knowing of all things mortal, and in your hand lies the spark of life and death. Those that die near you carry a trace of themselves that you can bring forth. As Dianara speaks the words, a crawling sensation wells up in the back of your skull, and you suddenly feel compelled to look at your hand. As you lift it up and look at it, you see the blood coursing sluggishly through your arm, pouring into your muscles, and in turn giving strength to your bones. What? Updated my journal. And you know Dianara is right. You suddenly remember how to coax the dimmest spark of life from a body and bring it forth. The thought both horrifies you and intrigues you. You have remembered how to raise others from the dead. To access this ability, select the special abilities button to the mark to the mark menu, the quick menu. You can only use this on party members that have died in your presence. It will not work on anyone who does not travel with you, and it will not work on party members you remove from the party while they are dead. I... I... I had some other questions. What is it you wish to know? Who are you? The spirit makes... Uh, okay, so... I accidentally... Blah, 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 blah. Can you tell me where I am? Where are you? Why are you here with me, my love? As in the times when life was something both of us shared, now it is the eternal boundary that separates us. The eternal boundary? Well, I already know what that is. Dianara sounds saddened. It is a barrier I feel you shall never cross, my love. It is the barrier between your life and what remains of mine. I see. Um... I need to escape this place. Can you help me? As you are about to ask Dianara the question, it catches in your throat. It occurs to you that if you tell her you are looking for an escape route, she may feel you are abandoning her. If you are going to ask her how to leave, you'll need to be delicate about it. Dianara, I am in danger. Can you guide me to a place of safety? I shall return as soon as I can speak to you again. In danger? Dianara looks concerned. Of course, my love. I will aid you in any way I can. She closes her eyes for a moment, and you watch an ephemeral zephyr pass through her body, stirring her hair. After a moment, the zephyr dies, and her eyes slowly open. Perhaps there is a way. Yes? I sense that this place holds many doors shrouded from mortal eyes. Perhaps you could use one of those portals as a means to escape. Portals? Portals are holes in existence, leading to destinations in the inner and outer planes. If you could find the proper key, you could escape through one of them. Key? Dianara pauses for a moment as if attempting to remember. Portals will reveal themselves when you have the proper key. Unfortunately, these keys can be almost anything. An emotion, a piece of wood, a dagger of silvered glass, a scrap of cloth, a tune you hum to yourself. I fear that the dustmen are the only ones who would know the keys that could use to leave their halls, my love. Then I shall ask one of them. Farewell, Dianara. Hold a moment. I learned much when I traveled with you, my love, and what you have lost, I have retained. I have not divulged all that I know to you. My sight is clear, whilst you fumble in the darkness for a spark of thought. And what is it your sight sees that I do not? Time itself reflexes, relaxes its hold as the chill of oblivion slowly claims us, my love. Glimpses of things yet to come swarm across my vision. I see you, my love. I see you as you are now, and... Dianara suddenly grows quiet. What is it? What do you see? I see what lies ahead of you. It ripples through the plains, stemming outward from this point. Shall I speak of what I see? Tell me. First, I require a promise. Promise you will return. That you will find some means to save me or join me. But why wouldn't why would I lie? Why I find it hard to believe that a woman I once loved would blackmail promises from me with a promise of revelations. Have you no faith in me, Dianara? Or I do have. I'm gonna make this vow because apparently she's my wife. I swear I will find some means to save or join you. This is what my eyes see, my love. 
unfettered by the shackles of time. You shall meet enemies three, but none more dangerous than yourself in your full glory. They are shades of evil, of good, and of neutrality, given life and twisted by the laws of the plains. You shall come to a prison built of regrets and sorrow, where the shadows themselves have gone mad. There you will be asked to make a terrible sacrifice, my love. For the matter to be laid to rest, you must destroy that which keeps you alive and be immortal no longer. Destroy what keeps me alive? I know that you must die while you still can. The circle must come to a close, my love. You were not meant for this life. You must find that which was taken from you and travel beyond into the lands of the dead. Die while I still can? Updated my journal. I do not doubt your ability to rise from the dead. I do believe that every incarnation weakens your thoughts and memories. You claim you have lost your memory. Perhaps it is a side effect of countless deaths? If so, what more will you lose in successive deaths? If you lose your mind, you will not even know enough to realize that you cannot die. You shall truly be doomed. Countless deaths. How long has this been going on? I do not truly know, except that it has gone on long enough. Farewell, Diana. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. love. She smiles, but there is only sadness in it. She closes her eyes, and one of the ethereal whispers, she fades. You back with me, Chief? You kind of drifted out on me there. No, I'm fine. Do you know who that spirit was? Eh? Spirit? Th that specter I was talking to. The woman? You were rattling your bone box with some woman? Where? Morty looks around, excited. What did she look like? She was right on top of the byre. Did you not see her? Uh, no. You just kind of drifted out of it for a bit there. Just stood there, statue-like. I was a little worried he'd gone addled on me again. No. I'm fine. I think. Let's move on. I feel stronger. I leveled up. We'll get me. I leveled up. Boop. Ooh. What do you mean... I don't want to be a fighter. I want to be a thief. Okay, have a good lurk. Saving throws have been improved. Fighting skills have improved. One characteristic point, 10 HP. What? Thief skill? I want to be a thief. I don't want to be a fighter. It's bullshit. Well. My class changes when I progress the story. All right. God, look at my handsome face. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't know. Did Morty level up? Oh, poor Morty. He's also a fighter. Also, I'm level four and he's level two. Hmm. Poor Mort. I don't know why I keep calling him Morty. His name is Mort. So, ego. Okay. I'm gone. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Hey. The plaque on the bar is blank. This looks like a large tomb. The marble surface gives it a rather elegant look. Okay, so I'm assuming that that was the woman I was supposed to find. Ooh, the giant skeletons. Remember, remember. Uh, we're gonna quick save. And then I'm gonna go try and click this door. Because it's ominous and purple. I'm gonna try to talk to you first. You see... A tired looking man in a black robe. His narrow face is extremely pale and he doesn't look as if he has been sleeping. His shoulders are slumped and the flesh sags loosely beneath his bloodshot eyes. He looks so lost in thought he doesn't even notice you. Greetings? Updated my journal. Greetings. The man turns to face you. 
and makes a slight bow. You suddenly notice that his eyes aren't bloodshot so much as they have a red tinge to them. I'm Soego. How may I help you? Um, I would like to leave the mortuary. Can you help me? Halfway through your comments, Soego's lips suddenly peel back, revealing a row of dirty, sharp teeth, and he leans in, sniffing you. <laughs> Snap his neck. <laughs> uh, why in the hells are you sniffing me? Your clothes, those robes, they smell of another. They are not yours. Soego's lips seal into a strange smile, and his eyes gleam with an almost feral light. Who are you? <laughs> Snap his neck. <laughs> Why is this an option in every single dialogue? Uh, I only took these robes so I could leave in peace. I woke up on one of the preparation rooms upstairs. He seems surprised. You woke up on one of the slabs downstairs? Yes, I know it is hard to believe, but it's the truth. I woke up on one of your slabs upstairs. Really? The dust man scrutinizes you. You do look like you've been prepared. I don't know how you would have survived such pain. Are you in pain? You look it. How would I have gotten here in the first place? Well, so I go squints. He seems confused. Obviously, a mistake has been made. Either you were brought here by blood relatives, other dustmen, or... Soego suddenly hisses as if an unpleasant thought had just occurred to him, or one of the collectors. Collectors? Yes, collectors. Packs of scavengers that bring the bodies of the dead to us. They may have thought you dead. Soego hisses and his eyes gleam. They are so copper blind that they wouldn't have cared to check before delivering you here. It is fortunate you have awoke, or you may have reached the true death before your time. Then there's been a mistake, and I'd like to leave now. Swago nods, and the corner of his mouth twitches. Why, of course, of course. Let me open the front gate for you. All right. Looks like my skills have increased. Why do I feel like he just locked the door? <laughs> Very well. The front gate is now unlocked, but you cannot re-enter. Really? It was that easy? I just had to, like, just go, oh, has there just been some kind of mistake? And they're like, yeah, that's fair. You are not dead, so... Can I ask you some questions before I leave? You may ask your questions. Uh, do you, uh, why would I rain on him? That's so rude. Um, if I may ask, are you alright? You look tired. Swago manages a weak smile, and the corners of his mouth twitch slightly. I've recently taken ill. Minor fever is nothing more. Sometimes they make sleep difficult. Anything I can do? So Ego shakes his head. No, no. Thank you for your concern. I will endure. Was there something else that you wanted? Um, if I, uh, do you know someone named Farad? Farad, of course I know him. He frowns, and his eyes gleam red. A ghoulish man, no respect for the dead, and even less for the living. He is a scavenger, a collector. Do you know where I could find him? I know he resides in the hive at the slums outside the mortuary, but I do not know exactly where. Some of the other collectors might know, if they'll talk to you. Uh, I'm missing a journal. Have you seen one? A journal? No, I have not seen one. Thanks. Anyway, farewell. Well, bye. I kind of want to go through that portal over there, though, because that's got to be way more interesting. There's got to be something over here. I want to go through the portal. Not through the fucking front door. It's so boring. Aim. What oh, that's right. You leveled up. Nice. Look at you, being all level three and stuff. Oh. That's a lot of good 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 ghosts Tomb. Ooh. Pen's note. This note has been written with remarkable penmanship upon the finest parchment. Vaxis, if you're reading this, then you have undoubtedly failed in your task and have been forced to use the escape route I arranged. P. 
pink lemonade flavored chapstick. Why do I keep saying flavored? It's not flavored, it's scented. Scented chapstick. If I could just sit meticulously open them all and smell them on stream, I would, but that'd be very boring for you guys. Ooh. That does not smell like pink lemonade. Maybe it does now that I've like... It tastes a little different before you like actually put it like, you kind of, like, break the wax or whatever it is. What is chapstick made out of, anyway? Is there, like, an ingredients list? Oh, oh. Is it wax? Like, what? what is chapstick made out of? What is anything made out of? Okay. Protolatum, paraffin, mineral... This is just a bunch of fucking chemicals that- oh, beeswax. Okay, so I was right. It was wax. Beeswax. So a whole lot of chemicals that probably do like the- oh, pe petrolat- petrolatum is a skin protectant, and that's its like active ingredient. And then it's got a whole bunch of chemicals and then beeswax and regular wax. And then a whole bunch more chemicals. <laughs> cool. I was just curious. All right. Sorry about that. I was just wondering. <laughs> um... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I told you that your little disguise idea was ridiculous. In any case, you'll need to lay low for a while. The dustmen may be deluded, but they are not fools, and they will certainly seek retribution for our intrusion. I've left you some coins. Use them to secure a hiding place in the hive, preferably in Rag, Rag Picker Square. The dustmen will be unwilling to follow for you there. Once you have secured a new hiding place, I have a new mission for you. Find out where Farad is getting those bodies he's delivering to the mortuary. He's apparently causing the dustman a great deal of upset, and I wouldn't mind knowing myself. Reports are that the stone-faced dustman at the gathering dust bar, Initiate Emmerich, I think the fool's name is, has been sending out finders to try and mark Farad's movements. See if you can find out how far along he is and hinder his efforts until we know more about Farah's activities. I don't want Emmerich finding out something before we do. Pen. Okay. I kind of want to take that note. This brazier... Brazier. Sorry. Brazier is something very different. This brazier has long since run dry of oil. There... Okay, sorry. What did it say? Only ashes remain at the bottom. Okay. Okay. I kind of want to take this to that guy. upstairs and like show it to him or did i accidentally leave i guess i can't then escaped the mortuary i kind of wanted to walk out of All the right. front door though but i guess we'll do this okay I'm gone. Well, hello. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half-lidded as if he has had trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you approach. Greetings? The man glances up at the sound of your voice, and his slack expression vanishes. It looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barge in an enemy house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clench. Get or I'll send you back to wherever your grave you're crawled from. Um, calm yourself, I had some questions. Uh, 
The man's face turns blood red and he begins shouting. Are you daft? With a snarl, he spits at your feet. You filthy scar-ridden dog. Off with you, or even the powers won't be able to save your hide. Okay, farewell then. The man throws a parting shot at your back. You'd best never cross me doors again, you wretch, stinking bastard. Can I talk to your wife before I go? This woman looks to be in her middle years, and her hair has streaks of gray running through it. Lines of worry crisscross on her face. As she sees you, she seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Greetings. You'd, you'd best leave for a call me husband. He won't take kindly to you, barge your way into our home. Calm down, I just had some questions. She glances towards her husband, worry in her eyes. I, I'm not the time, stranger. Do not be troubling me with such things. Excuse me, are, are you all right? Me? She looks surprised. Oh, I, I, she lowers her voice. You'd best leave. My husband's not, has not been himself of late. You'd best not provoke him with your presence. I spoke with him. He seems troubled. What's wrong with him? He's been out of sorts of late. A touch of the cough, maybe? She gives an unconvincing half-shrug. What's really wrong with him? I think... I think he's done something he regrets. Her worried expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to do such a foolish thing. Dead contracts? The dead. The justmen. Have contracts that give them the right to someone's body after they die. What did the dustmen do with the body after death? Animate it with their black magics, turn it into one of the walking dead, make it a worker till... She looks at her husband helplessly. Till it rots away. Why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been goat eager to bring home some more jink than custom. He's prideful and I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Can this contract be undone? She looks at you, surprised, and sighs. I've tried. I've spoken to the dustman he did the sign-in with, but he's cold and chill like all the dusties. He's even lectured me on me husband, as if I had no right to try and help him. Her lips become tight, thin line as if picturing the dustman's face. He was cold, cruel he was. Let me see what I can do. Who was the dustman your husband signed the contract with? The Dusties called himself Gravesend. I know not his first name. He has a table at the Dustman Bar in the Hive. Gather and Dust, I believe the place is named. You can most like find him there, trying to get more people to sign his contracts. I'll seek him out then. Where is this Gathering Dust Bar? Updated my journal. Head out to the street outside, go to the Memorial Stone, then head south and west from there. She taps her finger against her chin. You should run right into it. There's one of them. Her face wrinkles in disgust, walking corpses out front. Very well. I'll see what I can do. I won't turn away such a friendly gesture. She seems grateful, then her worried expression returns. But I must ask you not to not let on I asked you to do such a thing. My husband has a terrible temper, and if you were to find out... I promise that your husband will not find out. Thank you, stranger. I appreciate your help. It's no trouble. I go, I'll go see about doing your husband's contract now. Okay, I'm leaving. Don't ask me why I have a skeleton or a skull head with me. I'm gone. Could I have gotten Morty a body? Because, like, I feel like I clicked, clicked on all of the skeletons and nothing happened. God, how big is this map? Oh God, what are my top five favorite songs? I'll have to sit and think about that. Um, they're definitely Taylor Swift songs for sure. We're being watched, Chief. Just Art. like natural, uh, casual. Okay, I'm gonna quick save in case I actually am. Um. Basically, the entire Midnight's album, I feel, would be on my top five favorite songs. But OK, so we're going to do this. This is a this is something I'm going to get distracted by. So we're going to we're going to do that. I have to look at my Spotify. So instead of just picking five Taylor Swift songs, which seems very lazy, 
I will try to pick like something from different parts of my life. So I think I think my fate I'm going to go. There are so many Taylor Swift songs and I couldn't dare pick a favorite from her because I have so many that I love. Um, but I will say that I think the first song that came to mind when I thought about it was Midnight Rain might be my favorite song. There's a ton of other ones. I, I love the whole album. I, when I listen to the whole album, Midnight's like straight through every time, never skip a song. I think Great War is also another one that like really hits home. But like I when you asked Midnight Rain was what came to mind. Um, uh, if I'm thinking of like something that just makes me really happy, I would say probably Black Dress by CLC. Um, would be like my I want to feel confident and oops I'm sorry I hit you would be like my confident happy song like if I was about to get ready to go on a date or gonna go out and I wanted to feel good while I was getting dressed um, black dress would definitely be like the song I would put on repeat um, if I'm thinking about like childhood music that I really really enjoyed I was a I was like a punk kid when I was younger so I would definitely say probably something from Evanescence would have to be on there I listened to them so much when I was younger so like um Hmm, what would be my favorite Evanescence song? I have to look at Evanescence's track list. Hold on. Because I, I... It's totally blanking on me now, but... Let's see. Show all. Show all? Question mark. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I think My Last Breath might be my favorite Evanescence song off of their original album. Definitely listen to that a lot. Uh, have to put an Eminem song on there because he was very formative when I was younger. Again, like mid teenagers. Um, favorite Eminem song. Hmm. It was definitely something off of his either Not Alone album. Oh, I really enjoyed Kamikaze as well. Hold on. Let me look at the Kamikaze track, because that was another one where I was like, I will listen to everything off of this album. I'll go through it straight. So, um... Hmm. Let's see. I think Fall, Fall from Kamikaze is my favorite. I think I have to listen to it for a second. Is it the beginning? You know, yes. Every Fall would be um my favorite Eminem song. I just love that song. That song's great. And then so we got Fall. I picked an Evanescence song. I don't remember what it was already. My Last Breath, I think. Uh, Midnight Rain by Taylor Swift. Uh, shit, did I pick another one? I've already forgotten what I've already said. Hold on. There was Evanescence. There was Taylor Swift. So that's three, I think. I don't think I've picked another one. Oh, no, no. Black Dress by CLC. Uh, and then the last one, I listened to a hell of a lot of Nicki Minaj, so I feel like it would be disrespectful 
to not put Nicki Minaj in a top five song. But the problem is, is that I don't really like a lot of her songs. I like a lot of her features. But I mean, I do like a lot of her songs, too. So let's go to the Queen album. I think I think my favorite song off of Queen was. Uh, hold on, I have to go. She just released Last Time That I Saw You is so good. I love that song. Uh, let's see. Where's. Where's Queen? Oh, but. What was that song she just released, though? Not Do We Have a Problem. There was a whole... Oh, Seeing Green was also really good. Uh, what was it called? Uh, was it We Go Up? Hold on. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Uh, favorite Nicki Minaj song would be We Go Up. Now, I know you're about to say, but Celine, all of those songs were released in, like, the last four years. So... That's true. And that is because one, I listen to a lot of music and two. I have a recency bias because I am one of those people that once I like a song, I will replay it over and over and over and over until I'm fucking sick of it. And it makes me nauseous to even hear it again. So there are probably so many songs like I feel like, OK, we have to do a top six and here's why. And this is going to be additive of another song um, like uh, that was recent. Um, I have to add um, Good Girl, Bad Boy by Florida Georgia Line because I grew up in the country so I listen to a lot of country music and I still do I'm not one of those like abashed country haters because it's country I love country music um and again that was a more recently released song but it holds a special place in my heart because it reminds me of one of my roommates and he finds it so funny that I think about that song when I think of him because he doesn't think that he's a quote unquote bad boy and I don't either he's not a bad boy but it's a really sweet song and I love that song so much it's basically it's the um it's a song about a like you know your your typical like church going good girl falling in love with like a burnout. It's not like he's a bad boy, quote unquote, but he's like, he's like a going nowhere. It's that, it's that typical like country song or um, like hick movie kind of plot where it's like the perfect straight A's good girl falls in love with the guy that has no fucking future. And it's such a cute song and I love it so much. Um, so bonus song because I had to put a country song on there because like all of these different things that I picked were very formative for me like I've listened to every single album from Taylor Swift I love almost every single song that she's ever released it everything that she releases sings very true to my heart because we're very close in age um so as she has, she has like developed and sings about very things that like things that are very close to my life. As she grows older, her music grows with me. It's very important. Um, Evanescence is like that, that rock era that I had when I was younger, when I grew up in the country and I rebelled through music by listening to things that were not country at all so evanescence breaking benjamin you know good charlotte disturbed you know things that were very mainstream because that's the only thing i ever got to like listen to because i didn't you know live in a place that was highly cultured so like i love i listened to a lot of like pop rock things that were very popular you could hear on the radio and stuff like that when i was when i was capable so that's where evanescence comes in Again, Nicki Minaj and Eminem, both rebellious, uh, younger me, listened to a lot of them when they were um, like, well, when Nicki was starting out less with Eminem because he was around since the 90s. And I really only started listening to him 
after he put out recovery because uh after proof died uh he sang about a, a uh he rapped about a lot of songs that were about like loss uh which were very close to my heart and made me fall in love with Eminem uh and I love K-pop I love K-pop so much. Um, I love K-pop. I love Korean dramas. I love Korean culture. So I had to put a K-pop song on there. And Black Dress is definitely like my obsession song. I have a whole bunch of K-pop that I could absolutely recommend. But that's like, if you're putting me on the spot, that would be what I would pick. And the Florida Georgia line, because I have to, I have to pick six because it has to be a country song in there because that's what I listened to when I was younger. So I don't know uh, if that like it gave you anything to like help you. Uh, like if you were looking for song recommendations or if you were just looking to listen to me ramble for five minutes, actually 10 minutes, 12 specifically. Uh, What's about the hold up? My chat asked me a question. That's the holdup. So if you're ever looking for me to over explain a very simple question, toss an AMA out there. Oh, I read about you. Oh, hello. Oh, OK. I thought you were going to run up to me like they did in Baldur's Gate, where they were like, I need to talk to you. And a huge monument. There is no name or plaque identifying what it is honoring. Vines with black leaves. I was mostly curious. Well, I hope I satiated your curiosity sufficiently <laughs> by over explaining. You're welcome. I'm really, really good at thoroughly answering questions. And by thoroughly, I mean over explaining. Uh, vines with black leaves, the stems look incredibly sharp. Okay, I've read about you. The cowled figure is hunched by the mortuary gate. His face is obscured by the shadow of his hood, what little you can see in his chin, which is covered with stubble and what appears to be a foul green and purple rash. The rash seems heaviest around his neck, fading as it crawls up to his chin. Greetings. The figure doesn't budge. There is a moment of silence, and he responds in a high-pitched voice that sounds more suited to a girl of 10 years than a man. Hi. Who are you? Pox, am I? Hi. Uh, Pox? Mother and father named me, wishing, wished a pox on firstborn. A curse given. Came true, it did. Hi. Again, your eyes are drawn to the purplish-green rash covering Pox's chin and neck. You mentioned Taylor Swift's age, and I looked her up and I realized I'm older than her. Now I'm depressed. I mean, age ain't nothing but a number, man. Like... Like, age don't matter. It's about how you feel. And I feel like I'm 80, so. I don't know why I felt like I remember her singing when I was young. Well, she's been singing since she was 14 years old. She released her first album in like 2006. So. She's been she's been doing it for 20 years, so she probably was singing when you were young. So what did I just hit on my desk? Oh, I had some questions for you. Uh, what are you doing? Wait for the debtors, do I? Debtors? Corpses? Why? Find a debtor, take them through the gates, get some jink. Then again, I wait. Through the gate? Why? A debtor is to a dustman what coppers to a collector. Bring them the dead, they give you copper at the gates, they do. Why do dustmen pay for the dead? Streets clean, debtors put in their place, streets don't stink, dead aren't lost, kept inside gate, all happy. What do these dustmen do with the debtors they buy? Haul debtors inside gate, put them on slabs, cut them up, bury them, or make them walk. Make them walk? Hi. 
they make some get back up if the debtors gives the dustmans leave to and the debtors become a skells or a zoms is the front gate the only way inside the mortuary only debtor or dustman go in the gate they do you want pox make you debtor again um again many time you ask pox always do how many times exactly many time so we've met before hi what do you know about me you a debtor who don't stay debtor for long. Oh, we can't snap everybody's neck, dude. Somebody has to live through this playthrough. Deal square with Poxy, do. Do you know anything else about me? Uh... <clears throat> Do you know anything else besides of that? Okay. I vote snap neck. No, we can't snap his neck. One, we don't have the option. And two, we can't just kill everyone. Okay, well, I don't need to go in there right now. <laughs> um, do you know someone named Farad? Hi, Farad, collector, big, name has weight, cast long shadow, it does. Do you know where I might find him? In the hive here he is, somewheres. Can you be more specific? Somewheres in the hive. For odd hide he does. Very hard finding he is. Not worth finding he is. Not worth finding. What do you mean? Hi. Many hater ma many haters. <laughs> We're keeping that. Many haters, other collectors even. Sharegrave hates him, not like Farad at all. Sharegrave? Hi, Sharegrave big name. Carry weight, cast long shadow. Tell Pox what to do. He does. Would your boss, the Sharegrave, know where Farad is? Updated my journal. Hi, Sharegrave knows darks. He does. No Farad hiding. He does. Sharegrave in Ragpicker Square, many blocks west of here. Say Sharegrave that Pox send you. Tell him Sharegrave becomes Share Copper with Pox. You will. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I've lost a journal. You wouldn't happen to have seen one, would you? Uh, no journal have I seen. Things get lost in the hive, never found again. Many a journal, one of them. I see. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Farewell. I don't want to go in there. Oops. Dustman guard. Okay. This door has been sealed. Okay. Okay, there are just lots of vines. Lots and lots of vines. What is Davis doing? Obsidian wall has thousands of names carved into it. Oh, what the heck? Did you teleport and I just wasn't looking? What the heck? You see a tall creature with a shock of white hair. Its skin has a greenish cast and a pair of goat horns protrudes from its forehead. It is dressed in long flowing robes and appears to be floating slightly above the ground. Greetings! The creature turns to face you and a series of symbols appear around its head. The symbols have a slight glow about them and they just hover there. Oh, for the pow is safe, picking Davis. What's wrong? He's a Davis. They speak in rebuses, these annoying word puzzles. If you don't know what he's saying, then we better find a native or some other way to communicate with him if we want to. An annoying bunch. My my bet? Wow. My bet? I, I can't say bet, apparently, in whatever accent I'm trying to do for this guy. They can speak. They just would rather piss everyone off by trying to puzzle out what they're saying. What's a Davis? Chan is the janitors of the Lady of Pain. They float around breaking, fixing, patching up sigil according to her whims. They're worse than corpse flies, more size. You can't swat them though, or the lady will get upset. Lady of Pain? Who's that? She runs this city. You'll know if you see her. She's got these blades around her face. She's about the size of a giant, and she floats off the ground, just like these guys. Morden uh, nods at the Davis, who is looking at you both. Nobody knows much about her. 
She doesn't speak much. All you need to know is that you don't want to make her angry. If you see her, my advice, run. I see. The Davis waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. A series of symbols materialize around its head. Then they vanish, and a question mark appears. Try and strike up a conversation. See if you can translate what the Davis is saying. You ask the Davis several questions, trying to get a feel for the Davis that appear above its head. Oh, the robustness that appear above its head. It is extremely patient throughout your discussion, giving you easy sentences to translate. After a few minutes, you start to get the hang of it. It feels like you've done this before. Maybe you can help me. The Davis waits. Who are you? The Davis inclines his head slightly, and a stream of symbols appear above his head. You think he's saying he's a Davis. What are you doing? A batch of symbols appear. You think he's saying he's attending to his duty, or duties. Uh, did I have any other questions? Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? A lone symbol appears above the Davis's head. This one shows a metallic female mask with blades coming out of the sides. Just looking at the ghostly image makes you uncomfortable. Uh, that's all I wanted now. Thanks. The Davis bows slightly. Symbols swirl around its head, then it turns away. <clears throat> I thought like he was gonna smack me there for a second. <laughs> Oh. Oh, there's more than one of them. Alright, I understand. That wasn't a name. Alright, well, I'm gonna quick save in case I'm not supposed to be going into this house. Because you never know where you're allowed to be. I think the spell goes something like this, Lucia Londra. Blast. I almost had it that time. Don't you know it's dangerous to interrupt spellcasters while they're invoking a spell? Lucky for you, I was only practicing. What is it that you want? Sorry for disturbing you, bye. Okay. I guess I don't need anything from her right now. I'm gone. Maybe later. Ingress. Hello? You see a haggard woman wrapped in rags. Her hair is disheveled and dirty, and her complexion is extremely dark. Burns cover her arms, and her right hand is a fused lump of flesh. It looks melted, like wax exposed to a great heat. Greetings. Updated my journal. Was it you? What is it you want me? The woman's accent is thick, and you are having difficulty making out what she's saying. You want me to leave? Not leaving this city? No, so I'm not. I can't. Tried. It's not a city. It's a prison. Everywhere. Everywhere? There's worlds. There's her eyes gleam madly. Plains that be sinking sands, fields, thirsty needles, nettles be. Sightless worlds where your limbs are given life and hate. Cities of dust whose people are dust and whisper ash. The house without doors. The twilight city. The twilight lands. The singing winds. The singing winds. She starts to sob quietly, but she seems all out of tears. And shadows. The terrible shadows there be. Where are these places? Where's? Where's them places? She flings the lump of her right hand in an arc, gesturing at the cityscape. There's alls here, B. Doors, doors, here to everywhere. Doors? You... You're not knowing this? She squints at you and her teeth start chattering. Tell you I will. Beware every space you walk through or touch in this thrice-cursed city. Doors, gates, arches, windows, picture frames, the open mouth of a statue, the spaces between shelves. Beware any space bound on all sides. All their doors to other places. What do you mean? Every door has a key it does, and with this key they show their true nature. An arch becomes a portal, a picture frame becomes a portal, a window becomes a portal, all eager to take you someplace else. They steal you away, she raises the lump of her right hand, and sometimes what's on the other side takes part of you as a tithe. What are these keys? The keys. The keys number as many as the doors of this city. Every door a key, every key a door. Her teeth start chattering again as if she is cold, and a key is a key is anything. It could be an emotion, an iron head an iron nail held between your second and fifth fingers. A second thought three times, then thought once in reverse, and it may be a glass rose. And these are all keys that open these doors. Updated my journal. Yes. Her eyes or her teeth start chattering and she clenches her mouth closed and squints her eyes. Yes. Can't leave. Can't leave. How did you get Updated here? Updated my journal. From 
She seems to calm slightly and her eyes take on a thousand link stare. Came from a place else from here, almost a lifetime ago. Hummed a tune by a glade with two dead trees that had fallen together. A brilliant door opened in the space between the cross trees. Showed me the city on the other side. It stepped through. I stepped through, ended here. Why can't you go back? Tried. She tries to sob again, but no tears come. Tried. All doors here lead to other places. She shudders and grips her malted right hand. Went through thrice ten portals. Some on purpose, some on accident. None of them right. Can't find my way back. There must be a portal that can take you back. Can't even leave here. This square and there, the place of death behind the gate waits for me. She points at the mortuary behind the gate then turns back to you, her face desperate. Can't go anywhere in this city. You can't go anywhere? What do you mean? Anything could be a door. Okay, she said that already. Um... I think. Any- oh no, she didn't. Anything could be a door. Any arch there, any door here could be a portal. Don't know the key. Could be accident to an- or, or could be ascent to another horrible place. Her teeth start chattering again. Got away. Gotta stay away from the closed spaces. All could be doors. Could have a key on me and I would not be knowing it. You're- you're afraid to go through any door or arch because it might be a portal? She nods, her teeth chattering. How long have you been afraid of this? She squints. Since the last time I walked through the last portal, the place where my hand- since my tenth churning, I'm in me fourth tenth churning that now. Her teeth begin chattering. Thirty years? You haven't walked through any door for thirty years? Her vision seems to clear slightly. She looks up at you, her teeth chattering. If you got here, there must be a portal that can take you back. It's only a matter of finding it. She smiles. Her teeth aren't chattering because she is cold. They are moving inside, around inside her mouth. Her gums twisting as the teeth shift about. They rise and recede as you watch, chattering as they rattle against each other. What? She hisses at you. Only takes one portal you steps through an accident to drive the fear into you. I went through thrice ten, lost my hand, burned my flesh, lost my sense. She looks at her feet. No more, no more. I'm sorry. If I can find some means to help you, I will. Farewell. Updated my journal. Okay. So she's crazy. Ooh, another Davis. Many vines. Oh, I didn't mean to. Death of names. Sivtai. Quentin. You see a dustman with a crooked smile frozen on his face. To sight the smile, his eyes are as dull as stones. His right arm is shorter than the left, and he keeps it tucked to his side, as if cradling a small child. The dustman's eyes slide over you. Name, the way he speaks the name, the word, he sound. It sounds like the tolling of a bell. I... I don't know. No name, no name can't help you. The dustman speaks in a curious sing-song voice. Need to give a name if you want to see where it's died. Updated my journal. What? Given a name when you're born, give it back when you need it no more. Death of names, death of names. His eyes swim across the monolith, then the walls of the area. Buried many names here. Death of names has. Tell me a name... I'll show its grave, uh, Dianara. His eyes roll to the back of his head, then pop back with a wild gleam. His eyes run across the walls of the, mo of the monument, scanning the names at inhuman speed. He then points at a section of the wall, buried. Examine the names he is pointing at. Chiseled into the black stone is tiny, cramped writing is the name you requested. It is almost lost beneath the sea of hidden names, of sea of names around it. I had another name. Uh, doll? He shakes his head. Not dead yet, that name is. Not buried here. Not time, not time. Can you bury a name for me? Uh, well, I don't have anything. Okay. Probably something I have to do later with somebody else. 
The woman's face looks broken and she is covered in scars. They look like bite marks and fingernail cuts. She is cradling the shreds of several rags in her hands and is staring emptily at the wall of the monument, at the names there. Greetings. St get back. The woman's teeth peel back, displaying a row of black canines. What you want of Sevtai? What's the matter? What's wrong? Those Kaz Kawas chaos men wrecked my cart attacked me and killed three of my sisters who tried to stop them not sisters anymore now they're nothing but names on this ceremony on this memorial wall chaos men chaos men a faction they says what they are is an adult bunch that runs wild through the hive and does whatever they please we never did no harm to them then they lope in like dogs and tear apart anything within their reach who are these chaos men who attacked you they're a hiver gang, a bunch of adult sods that call themselves the, the Starved Dogs Barking or some such barmy nonsense. You know, I wouldn't mind... Their actions were unjust. If you wish, I can see that the matter is rectified. If three deaths they cause, then three deaths shall these Starved Dogs suffer. A copper earring in your purse if you pen three of those murdered sods in the dead book. Jig? I'll see to it that they're put in the dead book. Can you tell me where they might be found? Go out the south gate, spy word, spire word from here, then walk around the block until you come to a place where men run in circles, howling at the Sig sky. They're the starved dogs they are. I'll go and look Updated for them. my journal. Okay, we're gonna go and murder some people. The man before you looks to be middle of height and years. He is stout with a thick bullish neck and his shoulders are hunched as if a great weight was pressing upon them. He wears an impatient look as he shares wow, I can't read as he stares at the black monolith in front of him. The man throws you a glance. There's a room cutter. No need to ask my leave to stand here. Actually, I wanted to know what this monolith was. It's a tombstone for the plains, he scoffs. Graveyards of names are scratched on that rock. Can only hope my name's the one that'll split this stone in twain. He points at the base of the monolith, quitting right there, hammered and just hard enough to send the damn thing crashing down. Tombstones for the plains? Aye, Quentin smiles ruefully. The Dusties scratch the name of the dead on this monument here. He gestures around him and on the walls of this place. Not enough space by my reckoning, but no matter. They do their best. Can barely read half the names. What are you doing here? Reading the new arrivals. Try and find a new one every day. Try and remember if I know them. Nothing more. The Dustmen record the names of all that have died on this monument. Aye, they scratch them on this rock and scratch them on the walls of this place too. I don't know why they take the trouble to take accounting of the dead. The Dusties have more care for the living. The living? Aye. You know about the Dustman mourners that come to this place. They aren't mourning the dead, see? They're mourning the living. You can barely get a word in them edgewise without them asking to mourn some poor living Burke, you know, for you. Why do they mourn the living? You got me there, Cutter. Might want to put a question to them. Seems to me the dead are thrice worth the pity of any poor sod living in this pit. Every name on there is best is blessed in my book it is. Ever know anybody who came back after their name was put on there? You mean come back from death? Not a one, Cutter. Everything that lives dies, and that's the way of things. Still, considering the planes go on forever and all, I suppose anything's possible. I suppose so. Say, I had some other questions for you. Um... Can you tell me who that crazy dustman is on the other side of the monolith? Quentin smirks. Not the sanest bird in the cackle house, is he? That Barmy's death of names, though death of sense, might fit him better. What does he do here? He's the keeper of the memorial area, knows where all the names are around here, and he can point out and he can point one out if you need him to. He's a little addled to be sure, but he's helped me a couple times. He shrugs. He's also got the duty of carving new names in when their owners pass on. I see. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> you were not kidding when you were like, get ready for some reading. Being the sender. 
You see a heavy-set man with sharp features and a pained expression. Despite his huge frame, however, he has an effeminate look about him, and unlike the other residents you've seen, he looks to have bathed recently. As you approach, he looks up, hopefully, and calls out in a high voice, Craddock, good sir? What? Uh, his hopeful expression dies as he studies your face. A thousand apologies, good sir, if I have given offense. I am Bane the Sender, third child of Day Bane the Sender. I am one of the many runners in the employment of the House of Senders. No reason to apologize, Bane. What do you want? A thousand apologies for troubling you with such a trivial matter, but I seek Craddock, an overseer in the hive. Bane looks like he is in pain, but alas, he eludes me. He looks to you hopefully again. Could it be you? Have you heard of a, such a man? I'm sorry, I haven't. Bane gives a deep sigh. I am bound to deliver a message to him, and as yet, fortune has chosen not to favor me. I could help you. If I come across the man, I could pass along your message. Bane, Bane fa Bane's face lights up like a lantern. A fortunate day for Bane in the House of Senders. Any assistance he could provide would be most welcome. If you can find this crowd, I can pass along the message. I shall see it to it you are paid for your troubles. All right, what's the message? Bane recites the message almost like a mantra. The shipment must be incursed by the third day or there will be a penalty. Bane frowns. I'm told that Craddock will know of the shipment to which the message pertains. If I see Craddock, I will pass along the message. Is there anything you can tell me about him before I go that might help me find him? He is said to be a giant of a man, stern of features, that he is an overseer in one of the hive's marketplaces. Alas, I know a little else than that, good sir. I see. That's enough to go on for now. Bane bows. Thank you, sir. Should fortune favor you and you are able to bear the message to Craddock, be so kind as to return and tell me of it. I will see to it that your efforts are rewarded. Very well. Updated Very my well. journal. Okay. The post. Um... The filthy-looking corpse is in sad shape. Its shoulders are slumped and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. Stains cover it from head to toe, judging from the smell and the texture. The stains run from rotten fruit to mud and bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved into its body and several notices have been nailed into its chest, back, and head. I thought I was in bad shape. Um... Examine the graffiti and notices. A number of the leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tacked to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a bill of fare for a restaurant. One on his chest looks like an official notice, and another appears to be some sort of want ad. Ignore. Look at the. Ooh, I want to look at them all. Look at the post for Office of Vermin and Disease Control. To those high citizens wishing gainful employ with the most honorable and generous sigil government, inquire forthwith at Office of Vermin and Disease Control to help stem plague brain rats. Bounties paid. Copper given for each rat tail brought. Tails must be genuine and from rat only. No cat, dog, or fiend tail accepted. Office several streets south and west of mortuary gate in lower hive ask for official inspector in charge the respected phineas t lord uh 39 uh examine the bill of fare someone has posted a bill of fare for the gathering dust bar but the bill of fare cannot be read as the words Smoldering corpse bar have been scrawled in charcoal over the bill. Smoldering corpse bar. The zombie immediately jerks its left hand upward and points far to the southeast. A moment later, an arm falls back to his side with a thump. Reminds me of a job I want. Oh, yeah, he's all the way over there. <laughs> Reminds me of a job I once had. He seems embarrassed. Well, I mean, without the arms. Hmm. Um, official notice. Public notice. 
by order of the jur the ju the judiciary council and in accordance with the citizenry of sigil let it be known that those defacing a registered servant of the dustman either by graffiti malicious attack or by posting notices will constitute felonious assault and the proprietor or the perpetrator will be answerable for the vandalism of said servant by order of the hall of speakers isn't that a bit ironic seeing as that's what they did examine the want ad wanted able-bodied person willing to investigate a matter of the utmost importance to the dustman cause will offer suitable compensation upon successful completion of said task interested parties inquire with initiate norach that's so many consonants without a vowel gathering dust bar did i ask that gathering dust bar the zombie immediately jerks upward and points west. Okay. Uh, examine the corpse. Uh, examine the graffiti. Ignore the notices. Examine the graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustman to slogans glorifying what appear to be local games. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Farad on the corpse's left arm, then slashed an X across it. Updated my journal. Farad? The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upward and points out to the west and downward. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. Huh. Is there anything else? No. Examine the corpse. It was a cobblestone? Oh. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that the zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears, tears on the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked-looking cobblestone is still embedded in the side of its head. Pry out the cobblestone. You grab a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever was in its head turned to ooze long ago. Gross. Well, I've already forgotten where everything you said was, so... That is unfortunately unhelpful to me. The beast and the harlot... Okay. That's all I can think of whenever I see the word harlot. Okay, so I can leave through these areas. I understand. I'm assuming I can anyway. But I have buildings to go into. And by buildings, I mean I have the one building that I need to go into. And this a very annoying piece of shadow that hates me specifically. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to. I'm about to get shivved. Greetings, stranger. Looks like you're in Dark Alley Shiv territory now. Looks like you've got a purse that could use some lightning. You better pray it's got enough. Um <laughs> flee. All right. Uh How did I Oh, okay. I'm out of here. <laughs> I didn't even want to be here anyway. I'm gone. See you later. Thank you so much for s hanging out with me, Anzi. All right, I wanted to go through this door. It's the only building I've gone in. In this place. Oh. Okay. So. Awaiting death. Before you is a young dustman with stubble on his chin and dark circles beneath his eyes. He's staring at the wall with a somber expression. Hello. The dustman doesn't look up. He stares straight ahead as if he's seeing something several leagues beyond the bar. Can I ask you some questions? The dustman doesn't respond. He keeps staring from the distance. Alrighty then. Morty hisses at you. Let's go, chief. This dusty might as well be fertilizer. 
fair enough. Let's get out of here. As you turn to leave, the dustman suddenly speaks. His voice barely a murmur. You have to strain to hear the words. You think he said something about wanting to die. What did you say? The boy's expression does flicker. Do you want to die? <laughs> yes. Do you? Yes, he studies you. Why do you want to die? Um... Hmm. Because it is denied to me, that alone makes me desire it. The dustman listens silently. After you speak, he does not respond, merely watches you. He looks like he's thinking. Do you want to die? Is that why you asked? Yes. Why do you want to die? This existence. This existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue the shroud any longer. His face wrinkles in disgust. Why would anyone wish to remain in this foul city in the center of a multiverse that feeds on pain and hatred? Death is silent and comforting. <laughs> That's a bleak outlook. There's a lot more to life than pain and hatred. This is living. He bares his teeth and his hands clench. This existence... This existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue the charade any longer. Death is silent, comforting. Trust me, it's not. And how would you know? I think I've died before. The dustman blinks then sneers. You lie. No man can die more than once, not without being resurrected by mighty magics. Resurrected? Resurrected, brought back to life, the magic required is indeed powerful. Who would be capable of such power? A powerful sorcerer, or priest, or one of the powers, but not anyone I know. And I don't believe you know of anyone of that sort either. If I ever die... <laughs> If I ever die and remember, I will return and speak of it to you. Then you may gauge whether I lie or not. Farewell. Okay, so if I ever die, come back to this guy. And tell him. You see a spindle-thin dustman in dirty black robes. His stiff black hair springs forth from his skull like a crown of spikes and his leper-white skin is drawn sharply across the skull. He is frowning into his drink and mumbling to himself. Greetings. The dustman looks up, blinks once, then looks you up and down, studying you. As he studies you, he takes one of his spiked locks and points at himself with it. Norach, initiate, dustman, guard. I'm here about the posting outside. The dustman looks you up and down. Many troubles have I. Help can you. A mausoleum awakes. The dead walk. The dead disturbed. The dustman disturbed. Find out what disturbs the undead, and copper coins will I pay. Very well. Where is this mausoleum? Updated my journal. Nurok nods. Mausoleum by Dustman Memorial. Go north and west from Black Monument. Go to Arch in a semicircle over your heart with this finger this make. He wiggles the index finger in his right hand to the mausoleum. Go you all. I'll look into it then. Farewell. Okay. Need to talk to Gravesend and Emmerich. Before he was a tall, silent figure, he could easily pass for a statue, although the deep furrows in his face and brow make you wonder if the sculptor was a little too eager in defining the face with the chisel. He looks well over 50 years old, but exactly how much over 50 is hard to tell. As he slowly turns to look at you, you catch the dull sheen of copper eyes. Old Copper Eyes stares at you. His eyes are difficult to make out past, black, past, the, past the black well of his eye sockets, but they look to have coppery sheen about them. I have some questions. He says nothing. Never mind. Farewell. Okay. Uh, boop. You see a heavy set man with dark skin and grim features. He is dressed in dustman robes and is regarding you with a stony gaze. You have the look of a lost one. The man's voice is like stone settling. 
Did the wind send you, or are you here with purpose? Who are you? I am Emmerich. Factotum... Factotum... Factotum? Fact... An initiate of the fourth circle. Is this your bar? If you measure ownership in copper, this is not my establishment. If you measure ownership in spirit, it is mine. He pauses as if he's trying to emphasize a point. The dustmen here are my students. They are under my protection. Can I ask you some questions? Uh, can you tell me about the dustmen faction? Dustmen seek the true deaths and call it oblivion, but this is incorrect. To dustmen, the true death is freedom from the chains of the false life. False life. This life that many cling to with their emotions is a false existence. As long as one clings to it, they will continually be reborn into it. One must divest, divest themselves of emotion to escape the cycle. I see. Can you tell me how your act, faction is organized? Dustmen are organized into five circles. The fifth circle is made of the lowest rank of dustmen, initiates. The first circle is comprised of the highest ranking dustmen, the ruling body of our faction. Uh, I have come here in search of a journal. These eyes have seen no journal. Perhaps your search will take you elsewhere. Uh, I am here searching for a man named Farad. Have you seen him? I would know why you seek the collector Farad. Uh, he stole something from me. Emmerich remains silent. His gaze is unnerving. He doesn't seem to blink. Why do you want to know my business with Farad? The collector Farad has brought many corpses to the mortuary of late. One must ask where these bodies are from. Perhaps I could find out where these bodies are from. How would you do such a thing? I would track down Farad and ask him. If you spoke with the collector Farad and returned with his answers, you will have done a great service for the dustman. Find where the dead he brings to us are from, and you will be rewarded. Very well. Your path is our path. Return here when you have the Collector Farad's answers. Can you tell me where he is? It is not known to me where the Collector Farad is. He hides from the eyes of the dustman. I would seek other collectors and ask them your question. Uh, did I have any other questions? No. These gates are made of a featureless black metal, and there doesn't appear to be any way to open them. Uh, nothing of interest from him. Nothing of interest from him. What about this? Nah, this one's too clean. There's barely any meat left on them at all. Plus, I'd never be able to get that white wash off the bones. Alright. Uh, same thing. I see anything interesting. The answer is no. Alright, Grayson. This tiny wizen man is dwarfed by his huge dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late 90s, this man is extremely energetic. He fidgets continuously, and his eyes dart around the bar like a bird. Greetings. The man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure, and he gives a slight nod in the in the greeting. In greeting, hail and well met, traveler. You look like one who is just getting their sigil legs about them. Pardon me, have we met before? Your face seems familiar to me somehow. Possibly. Are you certain it was me? Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter, no matter. How is it that Mortai Grayson may help you? Do you seek... He, ch he clucks his tongue as he speaks. The contract? Mayhaps? Mortai Grayson, are you the dustman who signed the contract with, Ang with Angiar? Mortai frowns. He looks puzzled. Mayhap, he thinks for a moment. I do not recall the name, however. I would like to settle the contract. Mordai looks wary. I'm afraid that is impossible. The contract is signed, settled, and binding. Um. Let's see. 
The contract is tearing the man's life apart. It is causing him distress. It is possible that he may not even be able to approach the true death with such emotions churning in his mind. Horde chews on it for a moment. It looks like you've negotiated him into a corner. I cannot. It is a matter of law, my friend. Besides, the burden lies upon the signer to overcome his own feelings in order to reach the true death. I cannot help. So what you're saying is you'll deny him the true death for the sake of a piece of parchment? More, more ties sighs and holds up his hands as if to placate you. Look, it is not how you are making it out to be. You obviously hold the philosophy of the dustman in contempt to damn a man's soul over a piece of paper. Do other members of your faction know of your conduct in this regard? If not, they soon will. Mordai glares at you for a moment, opens his mouth, closes it, then opens it. By the nine hells, wait here. He drops his voice to a whisper and keep your bone box latched. He gives an angry scowl and stomps off. A few seconds later, he returns. He is holding a dusty piece of parchment, which he gives to you. Here, he sniffs disdainly. Offer a man's peace of mind. Now be gone and nettle me with your preachings no longer. I will leave for now. Farewell, more time. He did it. We helped the man. Now we must talk to the skeptic. As you approach, the elderly woman turns and stares at you. Look who's been a calling on Sarah today, death's dearest son. She looks you up and down, then shakes her head in disbelief. By every power in its mother, boy, what crypt did you crawl out of? I'm fresh from the mortuary, actually. That's so. Sarah raises an eyebrow. Warms my ears to hear you give gave that place the laugh, boy. Not much of a watering hole for one who isn't relieving themselves, she sniffs. <laughs> Too many cobwebs and dusty mines. You don't like the mortuary? Aren't you a dustman? A dustman? I suppose. <laughs> I've seen enough sand pass through the hourglass while wearing these robes. This body's almost ready to pay for the ferryman. She chuckles, but there's not much mirth in it. Are you afraid of dying? Of course I am, boy. Who isn't? Well, except dustmen. They're not afraid, because they've been swallowing so much of their own bat droppings over the decades. They've blinded themselves into thinking that death is some kind of release. <laughs> you don't sound much like a dustman. I guess the dustman robes don't fit me as well as they used to. What happened? Life, I suppose. It... <laughs> Never you mind. I won't bore you with the niggling details. I'd like to know, actually. Oh, would you? She looks at you skeptically. How old do you take me for, boy? Old? Uh, let her down gently. Not too old. She snorts. Well, you're wrong. I'm really old. Now I've spent most of my long years teaching dustmen. Oh, thank you. I needed a drink. <laughs> it's been a struggle. <laughs> There's a whole lot of dialogue to read. Thank you so much, Anko. Um, I've seen many dustman whelps grow within our order, taught them the ways of the faction, kept the faith, preached the tenets of the faction, and so on and so on. No questions, no doubt. This life was merely an antechamber that led to the true death. What happened? Well, a half month back, I went sick with fever. I thought it was the end. It, uh, it rattled my cage. How? Her face becomes a stone. There's something about having your faction members circle around your deathbed like a pack of pale-faced ghouls, nodding and agreeing that your suffering and dying is all for the best. Oh, Sarah is so fortunate. She shall soon be relieved of the burden of life. Burden of life. That's when it struck me. That? That there's something... A queer expression comes over her features, addled about not appreciating your life. The dustman keeps saying that life is misery and suffering. Is it? That we should be happy to pass on into oblivion? Should we? She shakes her head. Questions, questions, and precious few answers. It doesn't seem like you believe in the dustman philosophy anymore. I suppose I have got a swarm of doubts all buzzing in my skull. She rubs her temples. Hard to get them all to be quiet sometimes. They need to be fed some answers, and I haven't got them all worked out yet. What will you do? 
To be square, boy, I don't know. That's the problem with doubt. I can't even trust that what I'm feeling is true. Or if I'm scared of death only because of, uh, blah, blah, of my brush with the fever, or even what I should do. Is this a passing thing? I don't know. Um... Well, I don't really believe... Seer, if you had... If you had truly believed in the Dustman philosophy, then your brush with the fever would not have left you with such doubts. Seer stares at you, then nods slowly. Maybe so. Maybe so. I am! Everybody's using the lurk. I love it. Um, maybe so, maybe so. I am having a good stream. Thank you, thank you. But we're also just about to end, so... Um, she frowns, her face wrinkling up in concentration. I'll have to chew on it over some more. You shoo. You, you shoo. You should. It's no small matter. Love, now. Enough of me rattling on about my woes. Sarah stares at your scars. You look like you've shared a few handshakes with death yourself. Hasn't that changed your views somewhat? Doesn't it make you appreciate life a bit more? Uh, well, my condition is unique. I woke up in the mortuary. I think they mistook me for a corpse and were prepared to bury me. The strange thing is, I think I actually had died and got better. She blinks. You're rattling my coffin. It's true. Strange are the ways of the plains, and I've seen too much to throw any tale out of the wash. She studies your face. If it's true, why does this happen? All I know is I woke up in the, mor in the mortuary with no memory and covered with enough wounds to kill me three times over. Now don't be saying that too loud. She glances around. Most peculiar. Never heard of anything like that. Shame about the memories. Do you have any idea why this happens? Nah, not a one. Never knew anyone who death wouldn't take until now. I'm special. Death hates me. <laughs> Do I have any other questions for you? Questions? <laughs> Well, you can't ask, a crypt crawler. I didn't crawl out of any crypt. She frowns, her face wrinkled with a crumpled parchment. Right then, what coffin did you crawl out of? One of those shoddy splint coffins at Hemrises, most like? Gives corpses splinters, I hear. That boy's not been worth a clipped copper since his father died. Who is Hamris? Hamris is a coffin breaker, pardon, coffin maker in the lower ward, inherited the shop when his father died, much to the shame of every corpse needing a coffin, crypt, or tombstone and sigil. What happened to his father? Those ears just for show, boy, he died. His son talked him to death, most likely. That boy's tongue doesn't stop rattling. I'm surprised he doesn't shake his head loose from his shoulders. You two sound like you have a lot of... <laughs> oh, that's so mean. Um, have you seen a journal recently? I'm missing mine. What does it look like? No idea. <laughs> if you don't know what it looks like, how do you expect to find it? I'm beginning to wonder about that myself. Uh, I'm searching for a man named Farad. Have you seen him? Sarah's face crumples into a frown. That dog, he's the worst of the collector lot. I heard he had his kip set up somewhere in Ray Rag Pickers Square, many streets west of the mortuary gate. Dangerous place, though. Some of those collectors aren't patient enough to wait for folks to die so they can sell them for jink. I see. Thanks for the warning. Farewell. Okay. I think I've gotten everything from here. So I'm just going to run back to this house down here and turn in this quest, And then I'm going to quick save. And then we will end for today. Or, well, for the morning anyway. Uh, do I, should I talk? I feel like I should talk to her. Uh, Angier's wife looks up hopefully as you approach. Were you able? Yes, I was able to get the contract from Morte. Here it is. She looks relieved and her eyes become misty. Oh, by the powers. You must be a deva in disguise to do such a thing for someone you barely know. 
Give her the contract. Updated my journal. Nah, nah, you can't. If you sh could show me husband the contract, say that you got him for him, but don't say how. I'd appreciate it. Very well. I'll show it to him. Uh, here you go. You see Angiar. He doesn't look any better than before. As you approach him again, he turns slowly to face you. His face tightens you again. Didn't you hear me the first time, you pox-written dog? Get out of me house, or so help the powers, I'll carve you where you stand. Um, show him the dustman contract. As you pull out the contract, the blood drains out of Angyar's face. For a moment, he seems at a loss for words. Then his temper quickly resurfaces. Where did you get that? By the powers, you best tell me. I took it from a dustman named Mortai. It has your name on it. Angyar can't seem to take his eyes from the contract. Why'd you bring it to me? To ransom it? Tear up the contract. Updated my journal. You tear up the parchment and Angyar's eyes follow the bits of paper as they float to the ground with a desperate look. He shudders slightly, then straightens as if a great weight has been lifted from him. Yet He looks like he is about to thank you, then stops and stares at you suspiciously. Nothing's free. Not in the hive cutter. Uh, I might need a favor in the future. Could you help me? I ransomed me life to one man already, and I'm not about to do it again. We'll settle the debt now. Oh, um, I could use a place to rest. That's the least I can do. I'll have my wife get some blankets for you. Thanks. Um, uh, I didn't want to rest just yet. I had some questions. Um, can I ask why you signed the Dustman's contract? Perhaps it's the sheer amount of riches and wealth that surrounds you that distracted you. We have less than nothing, and I needed jink. Didn't seem to matter too much at the time where it might come from. But selling me body to the Dusties is a lot more honest than most work around here. What caused you to change your mind? It's just... I saw one of them zombies on the streets a half month ago. One of them zombies that worked for the Dusties, and it stabbed me in me heart. I knew I'd made a mistake. I didn't want to be a part of that after death. We've all had our share of mistakes. I suppose so. I'm looking for a name, a man named Barad. Do you know where I can find him? Even though I literally, I just asked this to everybody, I guess. That name be known to me and not a fond name either. Can you tell me about him? He's one of them collectors, had one with a long shadow, has quite a few boys at his back and beck and call. He may not be a lord of the realm, but he's a smart one to tangle. He's not a smart one to tangle with, lord or no. Do you know where I can Updated find him? Updated my journal. Aye, but I wouldn't be doing you a favor telling it to you. One of me kin fell into his lot a few months back and spilled some of the dark of old Farad. To hear tell, Farad's actually got his kit buried somewhere under rag. Packer, rag Pickers Square. To get to it, there's some kind of portal you need to jump through while carrying some junk in your hand. Shit! I had some junk. Grim Grimoire. PS2. Is it Grim Grimoire or just Grimoire? I will add it to the list. Let me just make a quick note so that I do not forget. Grim Grimoire. All right, cool, cool, cool. I figured, but I just wanted to double check. Grim Grimoire. I will add it to the list. Thank you so much. It's a 2D real-time strategy. Oh, fuck. I'm so bad at those. <laughs> Why must you punish me in this way? What have I ever done to you? The cruelty... Oh, that looks so good. I need a Celine drool emote. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Petra just posted a uh, cheeseburger from a business meeting that turned into dinner. And oh, my God, it looks amazing. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of. Shameless plug. If you're not in the Discord, you should come over. It's a good time. And I will add Grim Grimoire to the list. Thank you so much, King of Midgard.
maybe I'll actually play this game instead of like pushing it off for a remake like I did with your last redeem, which I'm so sorry for. Uh, to get to it, there's some kind of portal. But yeah, I fucking I, there, I guess I have to pick up everything in this game. Where is Ragpicker Square? It's a few blocks from here. Go straight west from the mortuary gate. Keep going until you start seeing trash and rags piled up everywhere. You do your best to walk careful there. The collectors there don't always wait for a body to die before collecting on the corpse you hear. Had some other questions. I've lost a journal of mine. Have you seen it? He frowns and shakes his head. Haven't seen a thing such as that cutter. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I rest here? Thanks. What am I looking at? I have rested for eight hours. We save. And that is going to be where we pause for now. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'm actually going to hard save as well. You save, save. Turns out I got a remaster. Ooh, on the Switch. I have a Switch. And a capture card. So we'll see about that. It might honestly be easier to emulate the uh, the PS2 version. And also, I think PS2 games look dope anyway, so. But we'll, we'll look into it. Because um, I do have a Switch and a capture card, so. Anyways. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, like... I, I think, like, PS2 is still, like, good enough that you can, like, you don't need to necessarily, um, like, touch a remaster of it. I think, like, once you get into, like, you know, the 1990s, it's a little woof, but, like, it depends on the game, honestly. Sometimes the original is really not that bad. Um, and some of the jank is really just our history. But yes! I uh, am going to head off and make lunch myself. I will be back at 2 p.m. EST, which is about an hour 45 from now or so. Um, as my lovely bot uh, has just done because I gave it a command. Uh, if you'd like to know when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitch or you can join the Discord community server where I uh, send out a notification whenever I go live, as well as post VODs, post clips, um, other things like that. Um, yeah, thanks so much. And thanks again for what happened today. Uh, thank you for Lord Leo Plays for following offline. Thank you for the AMA, Mr. Altap, for the drink, Onko, and for adding Grim Grimoire for the PS2 version, King of Midgard. Thank you so, so very much for spending your time with me. I'm going to run a couple of minutes of ads. If you'd be so kind as to stick around, they help me out a little bit, but don't stress over it. Um, I'll be back in a couple of hours. I hope you have a good lunch break. I hope you have a good you know, rest of your day. If I don't see you again, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye-bye now. Mwah.